tonight. It's the opening round of the state playoffs. The Newman Greenies host the Episcopal Knights. Steve Baranich and the Knights enter the playoffs led by quarterback Steve Underwood. The 4-6 Knights own a potent offense and love to pass. They're looking for revenge for an earlier loss to the Greenies. Tony Reginelli and Newman enter the playoffs undefeated. At 10-0, all eyes have been on outstanding play of quarterback Peyton Manning. Manning's instincts and powerful arm lead Newman through the air. Newman's offense is explosive. Manning guided the Greenies to 51 unanswered points against the Knights earlier this year. Tonight, it should be an aerial war. The Knights and the Greenies next. This is the Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. From Michael Lupin Field on the campus of Isidore Newman School, it's the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. State playoff action this evening in Class AA as the Newman Greenies battle the Episcopal Knights. And a pleasant good evening to you. I'm Ken Trahan along with Renee Nato. Great to have you with us. The state playoffs has arrived. It's a special time of the year, and obviously we're looking forward to a special game tonight. Renee, when you think about these two schools, you think about aerial warfare. They both like to throw the football. And when you start with Episcopal, everybody knows about Peyton Manning, but they have a young quarterback by the name of Stephen Underwood who is attracting some college attention, and he's a very fine player. He really is, Kenny. Stephen Underwood, he's 6'4", 210 pounds, and he's getting some, some attention from the likes of Baylor and SMU and all the state schools. As you can see him right there, he's quite a physical specimen, and it'll be a shootout between two gunslingers named Underwood and Peyton Manning. And as his number is nearly 1,500 yards on the season. And 10 touchdowns, and when he does throw the ball, Rob Stein is a primary target. So is Brandon Henry. These are two youngsters who can run a bit and get under the football, and they will throw it. Believe me, you'll see it in the air anywhere from 20 to 30 times here this evening. Episcopal comes in with a record of 4-6, and six, but that's a bit deceiving because they play in perhaps the best AA district in the state. Northeast is in that district, along with Redemptorist and University High. All of those teams are in the state playoffs. When you think of Newman, you start with Peyton Manning, and with good reason, Renee. He continues to astound people, not only the way he plays the game, but the kind of numbers he's put up. Nearly 35 touchdowns on the season. He's got some great receivers. Nathan Stibbs is one of them, and he'll go to him quite a bit. You can see his numbers right there. Only tw almost 20. 2,100 yards, 35 touchdowns he's accounted for. He's a big guy, 6'5", 200. He's got the arm strength to air it out, and you'll see him going through the air most of the night. You mentioned Nate Stibbs. Chip hey. Abbott's become an outstanding receiver for him. Robert Brundage, a good target at tight end. Cameron Johnson, some thought he wouldn't play this year. Well, he's come on to play well since sitting out the first three ball games. And for Newman, their defense has played well also, giving up 37 points over their last five games, and they have a couple of shutouts this season, all of which adds up to a 10-0 record. But it's a new season starting tonight, Renee, and obviously Newman has to live up to their laurels because they're in a very tough bracket. Well, you have to wipe the slate clean tonight, Kenny. This is a whole new season tonight. Everyone is on the same page, and, and one advantage Newman does have is they do have some players that go, they platoon quite a bit. Uh, Episcopal do have a lot of two-way performers, and the heat and humidity tonight may take its toll on Episcopal. These two teams are familiar with each other. They've played three straight years, including earlier this year when they met in the Superdome. In that game, strange game, Episcopal had a 21-7 lead before Newman scored 51 unanswered points to win 58-21. And because of the familiarity of the two teams, the head coach of Episcopal knows what he's up against tonight. And Steve Baranich, the head coach of the Knights, now joins our Lance Jacob for this interview. Lance? Thank you, Kenny. Field level now, of course, with Coach Steve Veronish. Coach, uh, earlier in the year you had this team down 21-7. It has to give your team a little bit of confidence because they're coming in as an underdog. Yeah, it does. Uh, we played them, like I say, second game of the year, and uh, we got up on them pretty good, and uh, we had a couple of the injuries, and uh, proverbial wheels fell off the truck, and uh, uh, we, we're hoping that we can uh, kind of slow down their offense a little bit more than we did last time we played them and uh, played a little more ball control with ours. And, Coach, state playoffs, as far as pressure goes, I guess the pressure is really on Newman. Your squad comes in here really with uh, everything to gain. Yes. Uh, we, well, the same thing happened to us last year. We came in here with a 4-6 and six record in the playoffs last year, ended up in the quarterfinals. We're hoping the same thing occurs this year. I, I, I know you know, Coach Reginald has got his team well prepared, and they're not going to overlook us, but uh, we feel if we play uh, sound football and um, cut out mental and physical mistakes, just uh, not giving up the big play, we'll be in the ballgame. Your weapon, Steve Underwood, has been very uh, – 
very good this year. You throw the ball a lot, very successful at it. Don't change it now, I guess, huh? No, no. We 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 run a control passing game, and the only thing we we like to try a little bit do a little bit better tonight is is uh, control the ball a little bit more running it. But uh, you know, with our control short passing game, we think we can move the ball like that too. Coach, best of luck to you tonight. Thank you. Hope Appreciate to see you after the game. All right, thank you. All right, Coach. Kenny, that's it, field level. We'll try and catch up with Coach Tony Reginelli in just a minute. Back up to you. All right, thanks very much, Lance. Why don't we wait till halftime when Tony is coming back on the field uh, to talk to him then. In fact, we'll do that and in the interest of time. The ball's going to be in the air a lot tonight, folks. It's aerial warfare. It's Newman and Episcopal. And it's coming up next. Stay with us on the Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Ken Trahan along with Renee Nato from Lupin Field here in New Orleans as the Episcopal Knights and Newman Greenies are set to get underway. And kicking it off for Newman will be number eight, Brian Buckman. Deep to receive for the Knights will be number eight, Jimmy Williams Jr. along with number six, Rob Stein. Good crowd on hand. State playoffs, first round about to begin from Lupin Field on the campus of Newman. A beautiful night for football temperature and the Lower 70s and a nice breeze out as well. Here's the kick by Buckman, very deep, and this one will sail into the end zone, bounces out of the end zone. That's a touchback, and Episcopal will start offensively, first and 10 from its own 20-yard line. And, of course, the Episcopal offense will be led by this man, number 13, Stephen Underwood, the quarterback, 6'4", 2'10", a senior, of course, out of Baton Rouge. And He's a top college prospect being considered by a number of Southwest Conference schools as well as a lot of schools from throughout Louisiana. We'll check the starting lineup in just a moment. Underwood, 103 of 236 for the year, 1,453 yards and 10 touchdowns. They line up with a single back set on first down. That's Jimmy Williams, Jr. Motion right, the pitch to Williams. And Williams keeps the football as they fake the reverse running right. And he is hit and dropped out of bounds. Right at the line of scrimmage, the penetration defensively led for Newman. By number 48, Scott McClave, the inside linebacker. Here's the Episcopal offensive front. Kincaid Jackson along with Kyle Vidrine. The center is Brian Jubin in place of Shows. Laughlin and Peachy across the front. Second down, and 10 yards to go from the 20-yard line. I formation this time. And the give is to the fullback and running room for Beckwith. He's across the 25. Desmond Beckwith to the 28-yard line has eight yards, where it will be third down and two yards to go. The rest of the Episcopal offense has Beckwith at fullback. The running back is Griff Williams. The split end will be Brandon Henry, their leading receiver. Rob Stein, a very fine player at flanker. The tight end is... Mark Brewer. Third down, two yards to go from the 28-yard line. Wide side of the field is the left side. They have a slot man to that side of the field. Tight end on the right, in motion, and they give to Beckwith. First down yardage across the 30, and out to about the 33-yard line as he plunges straight ahead for about five before Craig Clayson, the outstanding strong linebacker, is able to bring him down. Clayson, their leading tackler, but some running room that time for Beckwith. The Newman defensive front has Brian Turner. He'll play both ways at times. Nelson Stewart, Pat Tiefert's their best player up front. Eric Bielman at defensive end. The linebackers include Jimmy Robert. Jason Keck is terrific. Scott McClave and Craig Clayson, the leading tackler. First down, 10 to 33, and the give to the tailback. Running room across the 35, out to about the 38, perhaps five more yards. That time, Griff Williams, the senior, gets the call. He had two touchdown catches against Bishop Sullivan earlier this year, and he's a two-way performer. The secondary for Newman includes Sandy Bates, Medic Wamsley and Baldwin Montgomery. And Renee, I mentioned a two-way performer. We'll see quite a few of those as Tony Reginelli looks on for Episcopal. Everyone, almost every one of the Episcopal players go both ways, including the quarterback, Underwood. Tony Reginelli, his first 10-0 regular season in 26 seasons as a head coach here at Newman. Now Underwood takes a look at the Newman defense and calls timeout. So a timeout taken, 9.56 to play in the first quarter. We'll take timeout as well with no score from Lupin Field. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Isidore Newman School, a great academic facility, and they've produced an outstanding football team, a 10-0 team here this year, 9.56 to play in the first. No score, second and five, Episcopal, they're 38. Underwood play fakes, wants to throw under pressure, throws, and the pass is caught for a first down at midfield. Nice leaping effort, and the catch is made by Rob Stein, the flanker, who has his 21st reception of the year, 12 yards and a first down from Underwood. And Stein on a crossing pattern right across the middle. Great timing by Underwood to Stein. 
And for the uh, for the advantage of the TV audience, Stein really, really ran a good route, and Underwood put it right there. A little bit high, but good hands by the receiver. First and 10, first pass by Episcopal. Stein with 21 catches now, 422 yards on the year and three touchdowns on first down. The pitch to Williams running right, trying to get outside. He's across midfield and down to the Newman 48. He has a couple of yards on the play. Good pursuit laterally by Craig Clayson for Newman, and it will be second down and about eight yards to go. Line of scrimmage will be just inside the Newman 48. You can see them uh, attacking that split four defense, going a little wide, trying to get outside. The linebacker turns it in. A great tackle here by the defensive end. Eric Bielman makes it uh, second and about seven for the Episcopal team. Good job by Clayson and Bielman. Bielman, 6'2 and a half, 198 pounds, and a senior. Second down, eight yards to go. They give to Beckwith straight ahead. Running room across the 45. He's down to the 42-yard line. Has six yards as they're finding some Pretty good running room inside as Coach Steve Baranich looks on. He's done a good job with this football team this year. They're running behind the left side of the line for Episcopal behind Vadreen and Jackson. As you can see right here, they're going to run behind the left side of the line. The reason being, they're going to stay away from the right side. The right, the left defensive tackle for Episcopal is a guy named Tiford. He's a big one, 6'3", 227. Bench presses, 325. He's a load at defensive tackle, Kenny. Scott McClave on the stop. It's third down, a long two. Line of scrimmage just outside the Newman 42, Underwood. Waiting for his running back, Beckwith, to get his equipment straightened out. It's an official timeout as a result. He has problems with his chin strap, so there's an official timeout on the field with 8.18 to play in the quarter. We'll keep it right here. No score. Ken Trahan along with Renee Nato. Great to have you with us. Episcopal out of District 9 AA in Baton Rouge. 4-6 and six on the year. 1-4 and four in district play. But unbeaten Northeast under Doug Williams, along with Redemptorist and University High, are all in the playoffs from their five-team league. Third down, a long two. We're set to go on the give to Beckwith, and he's hit and dropped short of the first down, a pickup of a yard, but an outstanding play by the inside linebacker, Scott McCleave, the six-foot, 177-pound junior to stop him short of a first down, and it looks like they made punt. And McClave, a junior, with some back problems early in the year, didn't show any back problems on that stunt and uh, stopped him short of a first down fourth, and they're going to go for it, Kenny. Yeah, it looks like they are because their punter is Mark Brewer, and he ran off the field. So they're going for it on fourth down and one. First big play of the game at the Newman 41. No setbacks, double slot. The Underwood keeps, he's hit, and he makes his first down. Underwood so big and strong at 6'4", 210, hit initially near the line of scrimmage, but lunged forward with his big frame across the 40 to about the 39 and has a first down for the Knights. And the drive stays alive. So they gamble to some degree here, Renee, and it pays off. Yes, it does. And now they're inside at the inside the 40-yard line of the Newman Greenies, and they're looking to, to make something happen. Kenny, surprisingly, Episcopal has only attempted one pass. The thing that Newman must do is keep uh, the quarterback, Underwood, keep him moving. Don't let him set up, set up in the pocket. He's dangerous. First and 10, the 39. Underwood, quick drop, wants to throw, and the pass is tipped and incomplete. The pass was intended outside there for number 10, and that is Rodney Flowers, and a good read defensively by Sandy Bates, who went for the pick and almost came up with it, the 5'10", 160-pound senior cornerback. And Sandy Bates, great, great athlete. He also spent some time at the hardwood for Billy Fitzgerald's basketball team. Possesses 4'7 speed. First year he's playing basketball, but a great athletic ability, and he showed it right there on that play, Kenny. Second down, 10 yards to go. The Newman 39-yard line. Underwood under center with a single setback. Takes the snap. It's a sprint draw. And smashed in the backfield for a loss of about two yards on the play. With the football was Jimmy Williams. Great penetration defensively. Newman had a blitz on, and it paid off as Nelson Stewart led the charge, the 6'3 203-pound junior defensive tackle. And Nelson Stewart will get a lot of attention because of his sidekick on his left side, Tiford, and they run right at Stewart. They test him, and he's equal to the challenge, and the big junior makes the stop in a second down, third down situation for the uh, Knights of Episcopal. Third and 12. Twin receivers coming left, including Henry and Kirkpatrick. Eye formation behind Underwood takes the snap, play fakes in the pocket with time to throw. Looking, throwing, sideline incomplete. Receiver slipped down as the pass was intended for Scott Kirkpatrick. Bates on the coverage. It's fourth down and 12, and now Episcopal in all likelihood will punt the football here. They're not going to go for it twice in a row, and uh, there's a little advantage to him going for it last time. Now it's fourth and long, and uh, yeah, you see him punting away, and it may give uh, Newman pretty good field position right here. Mark Brewer to punt it away here, and 
High snap, but gets it down and gets the kick away. It's high, it's end over end. Fair catch called for and taken at about the 17 yard line where a flag goes down as the fair catch was made by Nathan Stibbs. As mentioned, there is a flag down on the play. And I think the official's gonna say that Stibbs wasn't definitive with his fair catch signal, Rene. He had, he had second guesses when he, once he called for the fair catch, he wanted to change his mind. But once you put that arm up or indicate you're gonna fair catch it, Kenny, it's knowing going back. And invalid fair catch signal green, been allows on a return. So an invalid fair catch as we surmised. And that will penalize the Greenies who will get the football for the first time with 6.20 to play in the first quarter and no score. Ken Trey Hanalo with Rene Nato, Lance Jacob down on the field. Tony Reginelli not happy with that scenario, but he's been happy with his football team, 10-0 on the year. Peyton Manning will lead his team to the line of scrimmage, which incidentally is the 11-yard line. First and 10 from there for Newman. The I formation with receivers to either side for Manning. Now they split the backs and only one back in the set, and that's Cameron Johnson. Manning under center. Facing a five-man front, takes the snap, pitches to Johnson, running right, has some running room, 15, cuts up field, 20, 25 to the 30, takes a hit, fumbles the football, and Episcopal has it. Episcopal comes up with a football. On the big hit, coming up with the ball was Desmond Beckwith, it appeared, and Newman turns it over on their first play offensively in the football game. With that one back set, they run wide right, and Cameron Johnson just couldn't find a handle. He almost dropped it a couple of times until he finally did drop it at the 31-yard line, and a good run, determined run, but he took a couple of hits, and uh, he turns the ball over, and you mentioned Beckwith comes up with it, Episcopal knocking at the door, 31-yard line. And Underwood, the quarterback, playing both ways at safety, was the guy that got it out of there. And he's under center now, first and 10 from the Newman 32. Takes the snap and gives running left and dropped in the backfield for a loss on the play was Jimmy Williams. Outstanding defensive play, great penetration there by Newman and a loss on the play of a yard. It will be second down and 11. And they're just trying to go left a little bit. Surprisingly, Episcopal is still trying to run the ball. They're trying to, to establish that ground game. Uh, but uh, Newman really on a great read right here, getting outside, making a great stop. It was uh, Craig Clayson and uh, stopping the ball, uh, stopping the ball carrier for a loss second and about 11 yards to go, Ken. Single setback again behind Underwood. Newman showing a blitz and the give is to Williams. Off right tackle, he's hit and dropped at about the 30. And the charge led defensively by Scott McClave, 48 with help on the play from Thad Tiford, 55. McClave is six feet, 177, and a junior inside backer. Tiford outstanding, a returning starter, their best defensive lineman, and it's third down now, and about nine yards to go. Yes, and you mentioned McClave really turned it in, and Tiford unloaded on him, really put the brakes on the ball carrier right here, and it's uh, still third and 11 yards to go, and Episcopal not having much success via the ground. Underwood likely will go to the air, eye formation, play fakes, heavy pressure, rolling right, trying to get away from the pressure, buying time, looking, throwing, sideline round, and the pass is incomplete, ruled incomplete down at the 20-yard line. Boy, that was awfully close as he tried to get it out there to Brandon Henry. Henry was sliding for the football on the sideline, kind of hard to tell from our vantage point. It was to the far side of the field as to whether he came up with it or not, but it's ruled incomplete, and it will be fourth down and nine. In an obvious punting situation, they want to get Underwood in a mobile situation. He's very mobile, Kenny, but he's not as, as accurate when he's moving around out of the pocket. I think with the line of scrimmage being the 30, they'll likely go for it here. It's a little bit long to kick a field goal, and they have somewhat of a wind in their face. And it does appear they're going to go for it here with 4.51 to play on the first. Fourth down, nine yards to go. Underwood leads him to the line of scrimmage and a four wide receiver set. Two to the right, two to the left, single set back, no tights. Underwood under center with a snap back in the pocket against the blitz. Stops, throws, passes, caught inside the 10 and down to the six yard line. With the reception goes Griff Williams out of the backfield. Beautiful pass and catch. Underwood to Williams, 24 yards and it's first and goal for Episcopal. And he really split the coverage. He beat Sandy Bates to the inside. As you mentioned, a great timing pattern right across the middle as he's coming across the middle. He beats the coverage inside, beats the cornerback, and it was a tough pass to defend against. And a first down, knocking at the door deep in Newman territory. Just a perfect throw by Underwood. Great illustration of his ability right there. First and goal, Episcopal from the Newman six with split backs, and now motion by Griff Williams to the right. And they give straight ahead, Beckwith inside the five. He is into the end zone, and a flag is down. Episcopal has scored, but there is a flag down at about the two-yard line. The flag was thrown as Beckwith was prancing into the end zone. 
And we'll check the flag from the officiating crew from Hammond here this evening. We'll get the official explanation. We got 18 the runner, White. We're gonna penalize from the spot. Take the touchdown away, aiding the ball carrier by Episcopal. And they'll penalize from the spot of the foul, which is roughly about the two yard line. The referee, Benny Mashita, telling us about that. The umpire is Ted Mangino. The line judge, Kenny Gardner. Let's watch the penalty here, Renee. See if we can pick up on where it comes from. And it's pretty obvious the interior lineman did aid, and that's David Peachy. And uh, you just can't do that, Kenny. <laughs> he could have made it alone, and Peachy just wanted to make sure he gave him a little bit of a boost. And now you're going to not only lose a touchdown, you're penalized and pushed back a little deeper. Yeah, it's a bad break, and he really didn't need the help. As you mentioned, he would have scored, but that's illegal. And the penalty puts the ball back at the seven-yard line where it's first and goal. So take the touchdown away. The headlines with Billy Kirby tonight, the back judge Mark Roberts, and the clock operator John Gardner, all from Hammond. Three receivers to the right side. I'll bet he rolls that way if he throws. He's looking right, stopping from the pocket, throwing the slant incomplete, and a flag is down, however, near the goal line as they tried to throw the slant route there, and the pass was just a little bit tall at the goal line for the intended receiver who's jogging off the field. That's Scott Kirkpatrick. We got pass interference, 10 green at the distance. Pass interference against Baldwin Montgomery. The call, it's half the distance to the goal, and we'll get a chance to watch it via our television replay. And Baldwin Montgomery is the best cover man for the Newman Greenies, and he just may have nudged him just a little bit and uh, got him from the back, and it will be a penalty assessed against Newman, and uh, it just keeps the drive going. Uh, a pretty high pass by uh, by Underwood. It really wasn't on target anyway. Actually, that penalty came before what we saw. It came on a, on a chuck. The flag was thrown before the kid came out of his break. It's first down. Goal to go from the three now. Griff Williams in motion to get the Beckwith straight ahead. He bites his way inside the two to about the one and a half. Runs into some traffic there. Some green shirts awaiting him, and Brian Turner was there. Scott McClave there. Thad Tieford for Newman. It will be second down and goal to go with 3.58 and counting first quarter. No score, but Episcopal threatening to change that. He could have used some help in this last play. He just couldn't find a crease through the middle, metal wall of green, and you mentioned Brian Turner really wrapped his 6 2 195 pound frame around him and, and stopped him one yard short of the goal. Second down and goal. We'll call it the two-yard line in the power eye formation. Three running backs behind Underwood, and the give is to Beckwith, and he is down to about the one, but short of a touchdown. Didn't get there on that play. Newman very stubborn defensively, and the charge led for Newman by 79, Nelson Stewart, Craig Clayson there as well, and it will be third and goal from the one. Really a sloppy play developing for Episcopal. Didn't uh, really get the, a good clean handoff, and. That hole was open for just a second. Kenny had slammed shut and also slammed the ball carry. It's fourth and goal. Big play right here. Third and goal, I'm sorry. Power eye formation from the one yard line on third down. Goal to go Underwood. The give to Beckwith running left and he stops short of the goal line. Stops short on the play on another outstanding defensive effort this time for Newman by number 63, Esteban Gershanik, who's playing both ways. Gershanik makes a big play here, and it will be fourth and goal for the one. No gain on that play. And Gershanik not only plays offensive guard, he plays middle guard on defense and plays inside linebacker and really, really made a great play, stopping a, a sure touchdown for Episcopal. Here it is, fourth and goal from the one. They send three wide receivers to the right side. Beck with the lone setback behind Underwood, under center with a quick snap, wants to throw, stops, throws the slant in the end zone. The pass is caught for a touchdown. Touchdown to Scott Kirkpatrick, and Episcopal takes the lead 6-0 with 2.19 to play in the first. And Baldwin Montgomery just got beat on a crossing pattern inside toss, and really it was well thrown low, just where you need it thrown, Kenny, and it's kind of tough to defend against that. And uh, first touchdown for, of the game for Episcopal, you can see for the TV audience, he throws it low and away and just tough to defend for Montgomery. Touchdown Episcopal, they, they draw first blood here, six to nothing. And Griff Williams knocks the extra point straight through the goalposts. Time out on the field, 2.19 to play first quarter with our score, Episcopal seven and Newman nothing. Back in just a moment, this is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Ken Trahan along with Renee Dato, Lance Jacob, 219 to play first quarter, and Episcopal strikes first, Renee. Nine plays, 31 yards, consuming three minutes and 52 seconds off the clock, culminated by a one-yard toss from Underwood 
to Kurt Patrick, seven to nothing, Episcopal. Another great throw by Underwood. Perfect location. His 11th touchdown pass of the year. And now Griff Williams has it teed up to kick it off. Deep to receive for the Green. He's a very dangerous kick returner. Chip Abbott, who has three kick returns for touchdowns already this season. He has good speed. Standing at about his seven-yard line. Here's the kick, and it's a good one. Toward the sideline, fielded by Mooney at the 14. Up to the 15, the 20, running up the middle to the 25, where he's down at about the 26-yard line. Knocked down there by number 80, Mark Brewer, and Newman will put it in play first and 10 from their own 26. And Peyton Manning and the offense have only been on the field for one play. Peyton, 6'5", 200 pounds, the senior out of New Orleans. Of course, the son of legendary Ole Miss and former Saints quarterback and Saints Hall of Famer Archie Manning. Peyton leads his team to the line of scrimmage. He has the eye formation lined up, up behind him. Now they split the eye, and Brundage, the tight end, moves out to the left side. Single setback, Holmes. Manning quick drop, throws, sideline, complete. To the 35, the 40, 45. Abbott goes out of bounds at about the 44-yard line. 18 yards on the play for Manning to chip Abbott, and a first down for Newman. And this Abbott, as we told you, is very fast. He's really a late bloomer, Renee. He hasn't played football until this year. He's an outstanding basketball player, and now he's opened some eyes on the gridiron. Here's the Newman offensive front with Neil Ryan, Eric Swanson, Kevin Singerman in the center, Gershanik going both ways at times, Shale Wolfson. Greenberg, the fullback, Johnson, the tailback, along with Holmes. And, of course, Stibbs and Abbott, the receivers, Brundage, the tight end. First down, 10, Newman, the 44-yard line in the eye formation behind Peyton Manning. Takes the snap and gives it running right to Johnson. Gets outside, 45 midfield, 45 to the 40. Cuts back to the 35. He's down to the 34-yard line in Episcopal territory and has another greenie first down, a 20-yard run by Cameron Johnson. Cameron Johnson just setting up his blocks and reading his blocks very, very well, showing no ill effects from that back injury he had some time back. Uh, grabbing the ball very well, turning it right side, having the ball in his right hand, which allows his left hand to stiff arm if need be, and scooting up the field for 20 yards. May not be the fastest runner, but very, very productive. Good cutback ability and cradling the football nicely there before Beckwith and Stein are able to make the stop. First and 10. Line of scrimmage just inside the 35-yard line of Episcopal. Manning with the snap. Play fakes rolling left under pressure. Throws in the flat. Has a man caught at the 30 and knocked out of bounds at about the 29-yard line with the reception for Newman. Was Sean Greenberg, the fullback. Green Greenberg out of the backfield. Picks up about six yards on the play, and it will be second and four. We head downfield level now for this report from Lance Jacob. Thank you, Kenny. There was no doubt that Stephen Underwood would be the key player for the Knights' offense, but so far he's delivered the big play on defense. His big hit caused the fumble, put the Knights in great field position. They scored 7-0, but now Peyton Manning and the Greenies are on their way back, back upstairs. All right, thank you very much, Lance. It's second down now. And about two yards to go, he picked up eight on the play. They mark it at the 26. Motion by the tight end, Turner. Manning, the quick pitch to Johnson, running right, tries to cut inside and does. First down and more, 25-20 and down to about the 19-yard line, perhaps the 18. Another good cutback by Cameron Johnson. Not a whole lot of room there. The tackle made by Rob Stein, the safety, but he favors his right arm and shoulder as he limps off the field. Here's the Episcopal defensive front, David Peachy, Brian Jubin going both ways, Jared McWright. Jeremy Burrell, Kincaid Jackson, a lot of two-way performers. The linebackers are Beckwith and Mark Brewer. First down, 10 yards to go for Newman. Manning a quick drop, looks, throws, sideline, pass dropped by Abbott at about the 13, in and out of his hands. Coverage by Scott Kirkpatrick, but Abbott was open there, and you've got to give him room because of his speed. The secondary for the Knights. Scott Kirkpatrick, who scored the touchdown. Stephen Underwood, the quarterback, of course. Rob Stein, who went out hurt on the last play. And Griff Williams. Second down and 10 yards to go from the 18-yard line. And Peyton Manning with a timing pattern here. He actually throws the ball before Abbott makes his cut. And uh, the defending 100 and 200-meter champion, Abbott, drops it. From the 18-yard line, second and 10, Holmes dots the eye. He gets the pitch running left. Off the block of Johnson, gets outside of the 15 and down near the 10-yard line. He's driven hard out of bounds at that point by Underwood. As David Holmes, the 5'10 and 160-pound sophomore, showed you some pretty good speed and used his block well. Holmes, of course, started when Johnson was hurt. 
And coming into the game, 64 carries, 412 yards, and a touchdown. And Holmes playing off of Johnson's block. And, and Holmes is actually, Kenny, the quickest running back the Greenies possess, getting outside with that speed, getting shy of the 10-yard line, actually right inside the 10-yard line, and Newman in great field position. Yeah, he gets it just inside the 10 to the 9, where it's third down and one yard to go. Single setback is Greenberg behind the quarterback, Manning. Motion right and rolling right as Manning wants to throw. Still looking, still looking. He'll run now. Tucks it in. 10, 5. Escapes a tackle, and Manning scoots down near the goal line. He's in. Touchdown, Newman. As Peyton Manning elects to run and shows his agility and mobility and scores from nine yards out. And Newman is on the board on the final play of the first quarter with the extra point still to come. Well, no one's gonna gonna confuse Peyton with a sprinter, but he gets outside. And you gotta you gotta respect his arm and gotta respect the way he can throw it. He can flick it in just a, a moment's notice. He does get outside. Got great size, 6'5", 200 pounds. Puts it to good use and really really squirms inside. Puts the shoulder down and shows some uh, some surprising strength to fight off a tackle and get into the end zone, Kenny. Brian Buckman to try the extra point, looking for the equalizer. Good snap, ball down, kick in the air, and it's perfect. But a flag is down in the end zone, and we'll check that. Flag down in the end zone. Usually when it's thrown in that spot, you might have had too many men on the field. On one side of the football, possibly defensively, as they have a player that just ran off the field. We got 12 players, illegal participation, white, decline, good. That, in fact, was the call against Episcopal, and it comes on the final play of the first quarter. So through one quarter of play from Loop and Field, we've got a good one. It's Isidore Newman 7 and Episcopal 7. We'll return with our second quarter of action in just a moment. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Tony Reginelli walks the sidelines for Newman. His greenies are now even. It's 7-7 as we get set to start the second quarter of play and a very good drive by Newman. Yes, it was. Seven plays, 74 yards, and the final play was a nine-yard scamper by Peyton Manning, taking two minutes and 13 seconds off the clock. And as you mentioned, as we begin the second stanza, it's all knotted up at seven apiece. Stein was hurt a couple of plays ago. He has not returned, so Taylor Bunch is back deep to receive the kickoff along with Jimmy Williams Jr. for Episcopal. Buckman will kick it off. We'll check that injury to Stein. That's a key player, big time player for Episcopal, a thin team to begin with. Buckman approaches the football, soccer style, and whacks this one pretty strong. It's gonna bounce at about the 15, picked up by Williams at the 12 to the 15, upfield to the 20, the 25 breaks a tackle and scoots out to about the 28 yard line before he is brought down by Esteban Gershenik. And Episcopal will start this possession first and 10, their own 28-yard line. 11.53 to play in the half, tied 7-7. They have had some success. Episcopal has Ken uh, running the ball, but I think you can expect to see them open it up a little bit more and, uh, and try to air it out a little bit, get back in this game. That's the, more their style, as you mentioned, 25 to 30 times per game. They really haven't thrown very much early in the going here. Underwood leads his team to the line of scrimmage. Twin receivers to the right side. Brandon Henry along with Scott Kirkpatrick and the single setback is Beckwith behind Underwood. Tight end tucked in on the left side for the Knights. Play fake by Underwood, wants to throw under pressure, throws and the pass is scooped incomplete. Incomplete, one hopped by Brandon Henry as he slid it around the 40 yard line. Showed some good hands there. Underwood with a very strong arm, but that time his trajectory was just a little bit off. The one thing you gotta say about Underwood, he's a he's a, he's a thrower, you can see right here. He just didn't have enough mustard on it and under threw his receiver on a crossing pattern. He was open, but just couldn't get him the ball. He does have 10, uh, 10 touchdowns for the season, make that 11, but uh, he has 20, touch, 20 interceptions. So when you throw the ball that much, uh, a lot of things can happen. Wide to the right comes Rodney Flowers along with Scott Kirkpatrick on second and 10. And the give is to Beckwith and he's slapped down hard in the backfield for a loss of about four yards by number 58, Jason Kick, the inside linebacker, the six foot 170 pound junior. 
who's had a big year. He had a fumble recovery and the win over Fisher, had an interception against Pope John Paul II, an interception against Hannon, and recovered a fumble against Country Day, among other things. Yes, Keck, really athletic at six foot, 170 pounds come. He came shooting as soon as the ball was snapped and filled the gap just where the ball carrier was. And quite an athlete. Not only is he an outstanding football player, Kenny, he's a catcher on a baseball team as well. A lot of two-sport players for Newman. Third down, 13 yards to go, the 25. Four wide receivers set Underwood to throw, rolling in trouble, stops. He's hit and he goes down. Back at the 16-yard line, he is sacked. The pressure provided by numerous sources and the sack was made by number 48, Scott McClave, the inside linebacker, and Episcopal will have to punt the football. Yes, and uh, once again, the thing that they want to do, they want to contain Underwood, which they did. McClave gets his hands on him along with a few other greenies, take him to the turf, and when you get him rattled, he's not as effective from the pocket. Chip Abbott is deep to receive the punt of Mark Brewer, who gets a good snap, and from his own six, boots it away, left footed in great fashion. Abbott has it at the 45 with time. Trying to get outside, evades one tackle to the 50, evades another to the 45, and is down near the 40 yard line, and a flag is down also. Nice return by Abbott of about 15 yards, but a flag thrown, and that will likely work against the Greenies. Yes, it was a very good return. It came to the area that it may be a clip or a blocking below the waist. We got clipping. 48 green on the run back. It's going to be a first down. So a clip on the play against Scott McClave of Newman, and that will be a 15-yard penalty from the point of the foul, which was the Episcopal 47. So instead of having plus field position, Newman's going to have this by the time it's finished with back at about their 38-yard line. 48 green on the run back. First down. Surprised they're giving the numbers out of the uh, the culprits doing the, the uh, penalties. Well, they're auditioning for the pro game at this point. <laughs> they're just going to go straight from the high school game to the pro game, Renee. They're going to bypass the collegiate level. But it does provide information whether it's good or bad. Receivers to either side for Peyton Manning and the eye formation behind him on first down. With a snap. Fakes the draw, wants to throw. Stops, flips it out in the flat. A little screen complete to Greenberg. Greenberg is across the 40 and out to about the 42. And a good open field tackle by Kirkpatrick at that point. Scott Kirkpatrick, the junior, coming up to force. And he really prevented a potential big gain there. He really did. And Cameron Johnson really missed a, missed a potential block. He could have opened him up a little wider. He hit Greenberg, and Greenberg really had made uh, tried to make something out of this play and great tackle around the ankles right where you need to tackle this guy and and uh, stops the ball short of a first down second in about six from the 42 Greenberg and Holmes in the eye formation behind Peyton Manning from the 42 they give to Greenberg straight up breaks a tackle across the 45 to midfield he's in tonight territory he has a first down at about the 47 yard line Good hard running by Sean Greenberg, who showed good balance on that play to pick up 11 yards. Greenberg, really not a big guy, Kenny. The thing the coaches will tell you about Greenberg, he never takes a playoff, gives you 110%, which was the case right here. Breaking through one or two tackles at the line of scrimmage, breaking another one as he got past the line of scrimmage and got as much out of this play as you can possibly get. To the 48 officially, a gain of 10. It's first down, 10 yards to go for Newman. Tied 7, 7, 9, 13 and counting in the first half. Receivers to either side with split backs, this time behind Peyton Manning. Takes the snap, quick drop, wants to throw in the flat. Pass caught inside the 40 and close to first down yardage to about the 37-yard line. Appearing to get first down yardage is Nathan Stibbs, the outstanding flanker who had a great game against Episcopal his first time around this year with 10 catches, 197 yards, and four touchdowns. And Stibbs making his 53rd reception of the season. He's got 18 touchdowns to go along with that. And you know, they don't give him much respect with his speed. He, he possesses four, five, five speed to go along with Abbott's four, five. So either side, either receiver is, is uh, very dangerous. As Tony Reginelli looks on, he got respect there as Kirkpatrick gave him too much room. A gain of 11, first down 10 from the 37. The pitch to Holmes running left, trying to get outside. Cuts off the block of Johnson inside the 35 to about the 33 yard line. He's got four yards on the play. And it will be second down and about six yards to go. David Holmes averaging 6.4 yards every time he touches the football. Very effective runner and it, his style really dictates it's tough to get a read on him and tough to make a tackle on him. Not a real big guy, but as you mentioned, very productive, 6.4 yards per carry. Brian Jubin, the defensive tackle, their best defensive lineman playing both ways on the stop, second down, five yards to go. 
the 32-yard line officially. In motion right is Stibbs. I formation behind Manning, who takes the snap and gives it straight ahead to about the 30-yard line on the carry for Newman was. Robbie Pothorst did a peen. It appeared, or was that Johnson? No, it was Cameron Johnson. Johnson straight ahead. Cameron Johnson picking up a couple. Give him two. It's third down and three as they ran Johnson straight up. Cameron averaging seven yards per carry on the season. Also has 285 yards receiving, so he's an all-purpose player, and he splits out to the left side now. Twin receivers to the right, and a single setback. Holmes behind Manning on third and three. Now in motion, right goes Cameron Johnson. Manning rolls that way. Manning gets a block. Manning looking, stops under pressure now, steps up, throws, and the pass is caught for a first down inside the 25. Great throw under pressure from Peyton Manning, who was being hit and going down, but he delivered the football to Chip Abbott perfectly to about the 24-yard line, and it's a first down for the Greenies. David Peachy, the outside defensive end for Episcopal, was all over Peyton, and he used that height and strength to get away from him. Number 61, Peachy, for the TV audience can see, had him around the legs, and somehow Peyton managed to get it away for a completion first down for the Greenies. At the 24-yard line, first and 10, Newman in Episcopal territory and driving. Great example of Manning's athletic ability there. Steve Baranich is a Baranich is a very animated fellow on the other sideline. The pitch to Holmes, and he's stuffed short of the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard. Great penetration. You had three men there for Episcopal. Mark Brewer was there defensively along with Griff Williams and help from Rodney Flowers as Steve Baranich shows his animation. He's out on the field most of the time, Renee. <laughs> and Holmes really has nothing here. He's trying to get outside, really can't cut it back. They slammed the door on the inside and made him go out. And he just had to tuck his head and see what he can get out of this. And it's a second and about 11 yards to go at the 25 of Episcopal, Kenny. With 6-10 and counting in the first half, twin receivers right and the eye formation behind Peyton Manning. Takes the snap, play fakes, wants to throw a screen and does to Holmes. To the 30, 25 with Rome, 20, 15, he may go. He's at the 10. He goes out of bounds, they say, at about the 11-yard line. He was still going down near the end zone, but he stepped out of bounds at about the 12-yard line, they say. A gain of 13 and a first down for Newman in a very well-executed play. It was set up very well by faking by Peyton Manning, shuffling it out to Holmes, getting his speed to make it good to good use out the left side, and unfortunately he stepped out of bounds because uh, he could have probably scored, but uh, it is a great field position for the Greenies, and uh, with uh, a little bit of time left, about five minutes and some change, they have an opportunity to put some points on the board. He did get in the end zone, but on the replay, he stepped out no fewer than three <laughs> times. <laughs> Got to widen that field by a yard or so, huh? A great job by our crew capturing that. First and 10, the 12-yard line. The Newman sideline looks on. Newman shifts offensively. Brundage lines up on the right side at the tight end slot. Receivers on either side and now in motion left. Now back to the right goes. Stibbs on the give to Johnson running right. Johnson cuts it in. Johnson is down to about the 10-yard line, perhaps the 9, as he picks up about 3 yards on the play before he's brought down. And it will be second down and 7 from that point. He had a gaping hole for just a moment there until Griff Williams from Episcopal slammed it shut and, and put the brakes on him. It's uh, pick up about three yards to go, uh, pick up of three. It's second down, and, and you can see Cameron Johnson squaring his shoulders. He did try to square his shoulders and head for the end zone and got about three yards where there wasn't much running room at all. Good job by David Peachy as well. 61, the two-way performer of the senior, second and seven for Newman. From the nine, receivers to either side. Split backs lined up behind Manning, who takes the snap. Quick drop under pressure, stops, throws the pass caught by Abbott. Abbott is going to go out of bounds at the one-yard line. He tried to stretch the ball into the end zone. In doing so, he lost the ball, but stepped out of bounds at the one. Griff Williams driving him out of bounds, but a good throw and catch. And Newman has a first and goal to go from the Episcopal one. And Abbott really with outstanding speed. you got to give him some respect, even down here near the goal line. And Abbott makes the catch, trying to put a move on the receiver here. Steps out of bounds, but he lost the ball. Kenny, fortunately for the Greenies, he did step out of bounds. Yeah, another good job by the crew of capturing his foot on the line, and that's right, that's a live ball in the end zone otherwise, but instead first and goal from the one. Stibb splits out to the right side. Two tight end formation this time with the eye formation behind Manning. They give to Johnson off right tackle. He's into the end zone. Cameron Johnson from one yard out, and the Greenies take their first lead of the ball game with five minutes to play in the first half. And a great block by Shale Wolfson, the right 
offensive tackle for the Green. He's six foot, 210 pounder. He's a three year starter, most consistent. When you need the tough yards, you run behind Wolfson, successful for the Greenies, and they take a 13 to seven lead here in the second period, Kenny. Brian Buckman, a good kicker, a strong leg to try the extra point. He has field goals of 36 and 30, among others this year. Wind has died down a little bit. Good snap, ball down, kick in the air, and it is through. Time out on the field. Five minutes to play first half with our score. The Greenies 14 and the Knights 7. Back with more of our first half action in just a moment. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Five minutes to play in the first half. Wind kicks up a little bit once more. And Newman is picked up as the Episcopal cheerleaders look on in delight. Lots of nice smiles there. 14-7, the Greenies on top. And Buckman will kick it off, and Newman again getting it done offensively, Renee. Yes, 11 plays, 62 yards, taking five minutes and 20 seconds off the clock. The final play was a one-yard dive by Cameron Johnson, putting the Greenies ahead 14-7 here. Deep to receive the kickoff, 22 Brandon Henry, 32 Taylor Bunch. Henry to the right, Bunch to the left. Buckman has it teed up at his own 40. Approaches the football. Bangs it away on the ground. Fielded by a short man at the 25 to the 30. And to the 35, perhaps the 36-yard line goes Rick Massengale. As he showed good hands picking up that ball bouncing on the ground quite hard to get it out to the 36-yard line. So a good job there on the return. And the tackle made for Newman by 82, Jimmy Robert, and a first and 10 for Episcopal from their own 36 with 4.51 to play in the half, trailing 14 to seven. Underwood getting instructions from his coach, and uh, he's not known very well outside of the Baton Rouge area, but the likes of Baylor and SMU and some other schools are really well aware of Steve Underwood and his potential as a college prospect. 6'4", 210 pound hurler for Episcopal. Two receivers right, a single receiver left. Underwood a quick drop, wants to throw his pass overthrown. And around the 43-yard line, tried to hit Henry on the hitch. Ball in Montgomery on the coverage. We head down field level for this report from Lance Jacob. Thank you, gentlemen. This is our first game covering the likes of Peyton Manning and the Newman Greenies. And I tell you, folks, he's everything he's advertised to be and more. He's so cool. Everything is crisp on the, crisp on the field. All of his passes are tight spirals and on time. He's going to be a good one, folks. Back up to you, Kenny. All right, thanks very much, Lance. Second down, 10 yards to go from the 36-yard line. Underwood with a single setback and the sprint draw and slammed down hard in the backfield for a loss. Nowhere to run for Jimmy Williams Jr. as he was met in the backfield by Jason Keck, the inside linebacker. And every time they've tried to run that play, Renee Newman's been in a blitz situation and they have stopped them cold. Jason Keck is like a magnet to the ball carrier, really slammed his body into the ball carrier along with Tiford. Uh, and really, it, it's been tough going inside against Newman all evening. Three wide receivers, two to the left, one to the right, third and 14 at the 32-yard line. Underwood expecting pressure here. Takes the snap, four-man rush, stops, throws, and the pass is incomplete in the seam. The receiver, Brewer, wasn't looking for the football, and heavy traffic there anyway. Newman had players all around the ball. Craig Clayson and Maddock Wamsley were there defensively, and it's fourth down in a punting situation for the Knights. Underwood dropping back, looking for receiver, actually threw it before he was opened, and uh, Brewer just couldn't find the crease, couldn't find the ball, and, and maybe this two-way uh, performance of the Episcopal players is beginning to take their toll because Newman platoons so much they have fresh players on offense and defense. And as we mentioned, they did lose Stein, Rob Stein, a very fine player a little bit earlier, a two-way performer to what looked like an arm or shoulder injury, and they can ill afford to lose anyone. With their limited numbers, we'll have a change in balls here for the punt by Brewer. Deep to receive his Abbott, standing at around his 31-yard line. Don't forget at the conclusion of this one, we'll select our AAA Trophies player of the game. Brewer in punt formation, standing at his 27. Good snap, plenty of time. Left foots it away in good shape, trying to kick away from Abbott. Bounces at the 35, passed out to the 30, the 25. It'll roll down all the way inside the 20 and down to the 18, and that's a terrific kick by Brewer. 44 yards and no return. Abbott misjudged that punt, and uh, he's, you know, you, you mentioned he's a point guard in basketball. He's got some attention from some Tulane uh, recruiters, so Tulane's interested in him. And uh, he may get some more feelers before this is all over. 
Well, you here's the statewide rankings and Class 2A, Haynesville number one, Newman second with Port Barre, Welsh, and Northeast. And you can stop right there. All five of those teams are in the same bracket in the state playoffs. And that's a travesty. It's a shame. It's not by design, but it really is unfortunate. First and 10 for Newman. Manning off the play fake, rolling left. Stopping, throwing, wants to go deep and does for Abbott. Double coverage and complete flag. Will go down, pass interference. At about the 45-yard line, in Episcopal territory, there was contact, and the flag goes down, the coverage by Stephen Underwood and Rodney Flowers. And actually, Abbott probably should have had that. He was bumped, and I think it was a good call on uh, an interference. Interference, 13 white, the 15-yard penalty on a first down. But Underwood, uh, he's, uh, he's uh, debating it, that call, but it's, it's gonna fall on deaf ears. It was a bump by Episcopal. It's gonna be first down for the Newman Greenies. And a penalty will be marked off from the line of scrimmage. That's the rule. It's a 15-yard penalty and a first down. And the line of scrimmage now for Newman will be the 35-yard line with plenty of time, 338 to play in the first half, 14-7 Greenies. And uh, Peyton Manning really has looked pretty sharp. Uh, it, was a, it was a pretty good throw. It was a little underthrown, but he probably should have had, as we said, uh, Peyton surprising with his, his mobility, moving left to right, throwing on the run. Receivers to either side. Twin backs behind the quarterback, Peyton Manning. Motion right by Stibbs. Manning with the snap. Hands off, running left to Johnson, and he's across the 35 to the 36. Has a yard, but that's all. Good penetration by the nose guard, Jared McWright. The junior wears number 74, doing a good job. Gain of one, it will be second and nine, and Peyton Manning has had a pretty good game already, Renee. Yes, he's only had one incompletion out of eight attempts for 68 yards, and uh, really done a great, great job, not only passing the ball, Kenny, but directing this offense. Well, he's run for the score two, and we see the replay of a Johnson. You might want to point out, too, that the only pass that was incomplete was dropped. Second down and nine, the 36-yard line. He's had that kind of game before. Receivers to either side, split backs behind Manning, who takes the snap back in the pocket to throw, wants to throw a screen, and does. Caught at the 35 by Johnson. He's out to about the 40 and tackled there nicely by Mark Brewer, who prevented that play from popping open. It's a gain of three, possibly four yards, and it will be third down and four for Newman as they mark it at the 41. You know, think about Cameron Johnson. The thing that people don't realize, uh, as he takes this little swing pass, he runs this very well. He's a very good receiver. Uh, after he gets the ball, knows what to do with it. Uh, had his tackle not been made by Brewer, he's on for a long, long gainer. Brewer missed five games last year and still gained 1,200 yards on the ground. Great job by Brewer there of reading the play, diagnosing it, and then going to make the open field tackle. Third and four, the 41 for Newman. Manning back in the pocket, wants to throw. Looking, throwing, and the pass is incomplete. Little miscommunication there. Manning wanted Abbott, but Abbott broke out slightly in the past, went in, and Newman will have to punt as a result. Looks like he may have been looking for Brundage. Brundage was in the area as a 6'5", 200-pound senior tight end, uh, all-district performer. Uh, you see Peyton Manning looking back, and Brundage and Abbott were very, very close to one another. It, it went right over the head of Brundage, right past Brundage, and right in front of Abbott. Might have been a miscommunication, as you said, between the receivers, Kenny. Brundage very well covered by Beckwith. Big rush coming, and they barely get the punt away in good shape by Buckman. And the punt takes a Newman bounce way inside the 20, inside the 15, down to about the 10 where it's down. Turns out to be a great punt by Buckman under heavy pressure, and Jason Keck gets under it to down it at the 10 with 1.53 to play in the half. Episcopal takes over in what's been a good game, 14-7 Newman. It's, uh, it was a near block, as we just said, as you alluded to. A really rush coming on the punter. Just barely got it away. Surprisingly, they didn't bump it to the punter, but he got it away, got a real good roll, and, and uh, Episcopal is down deep in their own territory at about the 10-yard line with just one minute and 53 seconds. Surprisingly, a pretty fast-moving half. Yeah, it really is. We haven't had that many balls that have fallen incomplete. Twin receivers right, a receiver in a slot right, the wide side of the field. Underwood under center, gives it to the running back, Jimmy Williams, trying to get outside, running sideways, and that's not going to get it done. Does manage to squeeze a couple of yards out of it to about the 12, and it's second and eight. Renee, as a youngster, looks on enjoying this one. 
Running back has to make a decision, and that time, running laterally, he hesitated a little bit too long for anything to develop. He really did, and he waited too long when he first got the ball. You have to know just where you're going. Instinct has to dictate where you're going. He slows down for just a brief second, and that moment allows the defense to catch up with him, cut off any lanes, any angles he has, and uh, use that sideline as an advantage to the defense. Of course, outstanding pursuit by the Greenies. He did get four at second down and six, and the give is straight ahead, and that's Beckwith, and he has met hard and stopped, loses the football, but forward progress was blown dead before the ball came out. It'll be a gain of one to the 15, and he was stood up, and the whistles were blowing, and then the ball came out. So that's a dead ball, and it will be to the 15, and a timeout has been taken by Newman. They'd like to get the ball back. Timeout on the field with 1.37 to play in the half. It's Newman 14, Episcopal 7. We're back in 30 seconds. This is the WSMB 13.50 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. The cheerleaders for Newman looking on, enjoying this one, as are the fans. It's been a well-played game to this point. Seven-point lead for Newman. They call timeout, hoping to be able to get the football back. They have Episcopal pin back at their own 15-yard line, where it's third down and five yards to go, and a pretty sound strategy, Renee. A couple of miscues has allowed Episcopal to get back in the game in the first period at fumble. Uh, that uh, turnover that gave Episcopal an opportunity to score, which they took advantage of, 14-7, to but it's been all Newman, particularly in the second period. Single setback, Jimmy Williams behind the quarterback. Receivers to either side, Griff Williams in the slot left, back in the pocket to throw his underwood. Heavy pressure, stops, throws deep sideline, incomplete, in and out of the hands of Brandon Henry. Good coverage by Sandy Bates, but boy, a strong arm displayed there by Underwood. But the pass hits the turf with a minute 30 to play, stops the clock, and Newman will get it back. Really a tough pass to throw, that out pattern. He, boy, he put a little mustard on it, and the junior, Henry, should have had it. Falls incomplete, stopping the clock with, with about a minute 30 to go here. And Kenny, and I tell you, Newman could take advantage of this and get in great field uh, scoring position. Mark, Mark Brewer to punt it away. Abbott is deep. The kick is away, and this one is heading towards Stibbs, who makes a good catch at his 45. Back pedals to the 42, now running left back to the 45. He's going to fight his way out of bounds at about midfield. Got about as much as he could out of it. He did a great job of catching the football, Renee, and saving field position for his team there. He really did. It's Let's head downfield level now for this report from Lance Jacob. Thank you, Kenny. Coach Frank Jandusa of Newman just told Peyton Manning to be careful of the wind. The wind has a tendency to gust tonight, and he told Peyton Manning that if he's going to go deep, muscle up on the football and take some of the air away from it. So keep an eye out for that. If it's going to be a long pass, look for a crossing route. Back up to you. All right, thanks, Lance. The assistant coaches to Tony Reginelli include Frank Jandusa, Keith Hecker, Bradley Ferris, and Jeff Brock. They do a great job. First down, 10 yards to go. The Episcopal 49 with a minute 17 and a half. Manning play faking, rolling right, stopping, throwing. And the pass is caught by Brundage, breaks a tackle, 35-30, goes out of bounds, right in front of the Cox and WSMB banners at the 28-yard line. 21 yards and a first down from Manning to Brundage. Big league throw. What a big league throw that was. He threw a frozen rope right into the hands of Brundage. And you know, Brundage is that tight end that silently gets the job done. 6'5", performer. He's an all-district performer in football, but he's also uh, a basketball forward for the defending state champion, Newman Greenies. Yeah, he's a good player and co-captain of that basketball team, and he's turned into an outstanding tight end as well as 24th catch of the year. Now 368 yards on the season. First down and 10, the 28, a minute six to play on the half. The pitch to Holmes running right, cuts off a block to the 25, fights his way down to about the 21, has seven yards. Clock will continue to tick unless Newman calls timeout. They haven't done so yet. They're in their hurry-up mode. Holmes picks up about seven yards. It will be second down. The clock running, 50 seconds and counting. Manning barking signals at the line of scrimmage, trying to get them set. We watch the replay quickly, but we're ready for live action once more. Second down and seven. Manning quick drop, wants to throw. Outside pass caught by Abbott at the 15, and he goes down at about the 13-yard line, and he has a first down for Newman. And the clock now down to 32 seconds, and a timeout will be called by the Greenies. Timeout taken with 32 seconds to play in the half. 14 to 7, Newman on top will keep it right here, Renee. This was an excellent throw by Manning once more, and it's amazing 
you find out a lot about the arm strength of quarterbacks by their ability to throw those long out routes. It really does. You really have to throw that just right because when you throw that out route, it's a longer, you know, it's 53 yards across the field. And uh, when he throws it that way, you got a lot of things can happen in between defenders and such. 32 seconds, as you see on the clock right here. But Abbott making a great catch. This 5'10", 165-pounder, a defending 100 and 200-meter di district champion. He negotiates that 100 meters in 10-7. So he gets a crack, and look out. It'll be all little Katie bar the door for the Episcopal uh, defenders because uh, Kyle Abbott gets behind you, and you won't catch him. Well, he marked this ball at the 15. His forward progress was to the 13. He then was driven back, but he gets the 15 as the play results with 32 seconds to play. Newman has taken timeout, and options being discussed. Peyton Manning getting instructions, and we have a chance to watch this play again. Watch where he's hit initially at the 13-yard line before he's driven back. He lets it go right from his ear. Peyton Manning we're talking about, throwing to Abbott. Catches it good, and he keeps moving forward. Good tackle prevented him from going forward anymore. And, uh, yeah, it looks like <laughs> it's his... It's an interesting uh, mark, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they, how they got to the 15. His, his progress was a little further up the field. 32 seconds to play in the half, and now the team's coming back out onto the field after getting instructions from the sideline. Last year, Newman, a great season, 11-2, 5-1 in district play, tied for first in 11 A, Beat Parkview, beat Patterson in the playoffs, lost a heartbreaker to Pickering here that we did for Radio 23-21 on the final seconds of the game. Manning back in the pocket to throw. Looking, throwing, sideline, has Johnson at the five, Johnson to the end zone, he's in, touchdown, Cameron Johnson. Out of the backfield, 15 yards, a perfect throw from Manning, and Newman increases their lead to 20 to 7. And what was that? His 36th touchdown pass of the season, putting them ahead 20 to 20 to 7. But uh, he checked off. He looked like he looked for. A, it was probably Cameron Johnson, and you see Papa, proud Papa, drawing the play up just as it worked. And I'm sure he's saying, "Yeah, I told uh, Peyton that's how it's going to work. So let's do it this way." He's probably saying he drew that play up himself. Archie's t Archie's telling him, "Hey, I drew that play up. That's the way it went, and he did it just like I showed him." <laughs> Archie did it pretty good himself, didn't he? Buckman's kick is up, and it is through. Brian Buckman converts for the third consecutive time and a timeout on the field with 26 seconds to play first half with our score, the Newman Greenies 21 and the Episcopal Knights 7. We're back with the conclusion of the first half in just a moment. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Kendra Han, Renee Nato, 26 seconds to play first half. 21-7, Newman, Buckman to kick it off. Deep to receive, Taylor Bunch along with Jimmy Williams, Jr. And the ball away on the ground, bouncing, rolling down toward the out-of-bounds marker and does roll out of bounds at about the 11. That will give Episcopal pretty good field position with 26 seconds to play in the half. And it will be interesting. They'll have a little time to try to get something done themselves here, Renee. Yes, and uh, Newman got the ball with a minute and 30 seconds to go here in the first half. They they'd made it, they made the most of the opportunity going four plays, 49 yards, taking just 51 ticks off the clock. The uh, final play here, as you can see it on the TV replay, was Peyton Manning going to Cameron Johnson for 15 yards and a score, and it looks like it may have been a second dairy to receiver that he may have gone to. So a good a good read by Peyton Manning. It was Cameron Johnson's second score of the, of the evening. Johnson had a mismatch with Mark Brewer and just beat him in a perfect throw from Peyton. First and 10, the 35-yard line, 26 seconds left. Piscopal will run the ball. They pitch it left to Griff Williams. He's going nowhere. Slammed down at the line of scrimmage. He had nowhere to go because Brian Turner crashed from his defensive end spot to bring him down. Turner, a two-way performer, also a tight end at 6'1", 195 at junior. Episcopal takes timeout immediately with 16 seconds to play. That was an interesting call, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. You're deep in your own territory, 35-yard line, and going to call a timeout with 16 ticks left. And, of course, with the... The, uh, the firepower that uh, Newman seems to have with Peyton Manning and company, they could strike from here. It, it, a turnover would have happened. So it's kind of an interesting call. They would call a timeout with well, just 16 I, I don't, I'm not referring to the timeout. I'm, I'm surprised they don't try to throw the ball here. They're on 35-yard line. Pretty good field position to start the drive. A short field to work with. And 
the fact that they're in a hurry-up mode and trying to run the ball is a little bit of a contradiction. I guess they thought they could catch the Greenies off guard there. Yeah, it wasn't even a real good developed play, a, a, a quick pitch left, and you would have thought maybe a swing pass or something, anything, and get it down the field, even a, uh, the way that Underwood can throw the ball and use the whole field, but uh, that was a surprise call, the quick pitch they just had. The only successful running that Episcopal has done thus far came on the first drive, and that was inside the tackles. Second and 10, the 35 quick snap underwood, the sprint draw, and that's going nowhere. They've tried that play about four times, and the same result every time. A loss on the play. Tiford was there defensively. Nelson Stewart was there as well. Line of scrimmage will be the 33-yard line, and the first half will come to a close. At the end of one half, from Michael Lupin Field on the campus of Newman School, our score is Newman 21 and Episcopal 7. Halftime here at Lupin Field, 21-7, Newman on top. Ken Trahan along with Renee Nado, glad to have you with us. Lance Jacob is downfield level now, and he has Coach Tony Reginelli of the Greenies with him. Lance? Thank you, Kenny. Field level now, of course, with Coach Tony Reginelli. Coach, 21-7, your team's playing exceptionally well. Uh, the first quarter, we were a little uh, slow, but, you know, we didn't have the ball. They did a good job running the ball on us. They kept the ball away from our offense, but uh, once we did well, you know, the second quarter, I think we started moving the ball, we got the ball back, and we put points on the board. You opened up, it appeared you were keying on Steve Underwood ex exceptionally a lot, and uh, the draw plays hurt you early on. Right. He's a good quarterback. He puts the ball in the air, and we, you know, we got to keep the ball away from the quarterback. We tried to put more pressure, and they ran up the middle, it hurts a little bit. We made some adjustments. Our, our defense doing a good job, though. Coach, it hasn't taken more than a half, but our audience has, has learned that this team is more than just Peyton Manning. Oh, it is. I tell you, hey, the wide receivers, the skilled guys, and our defense has played good all year, so I'm proud of all of them, really. Coach Peyton's an exceptional athlete. Does he do anything uh, that surprises you? I mean, he does everything. No, what, he's uh, 10 out of 12, 10 out of 11 for about 100 yards, so that doesn't surprise me. That, that's a normal workout for him. Coach, congratulations, and uh, well, not yet, actually, but congratulations on one half. We'd like to play better second <laughs> All right, that's Coach Tony Reginelli, and of course, there's still 24 minutes to play. Back up to you, Kenny. All right, thank you. He's Lance Jacob. I'm Ken Trahan, along with Renee Nato. 21-7, our score, and Renee, no real surprises from what we've seen in the first half. The ball has been in the air. Manning's been outstanding to date. Cameron Johnson, after a fumble, has played well, and we can see the various weapons that Newman has offensively. If there is a surprise, as Newman's defense has played exceptionally well and really shut down Underwood, and especially in the late in the first quarter and uh, second quarter, they've really shut down uh, Newman's uh, running attack. You see it right there, uh, rushing, uh, Episcopal can only manage 20 yards rushing, where Newman, 116, and Cameron Johnson has had an outstanding game thus far. 212 yards to 57, the totals, Newman on top of that department. And we're set for the second half kickoff. Griff Williams will kick it away, and deep to receive is Chip Abbott for the Greenies. 21-7, Newman on top. Ken Trahan, Renee Nato, and Williams' kick is away, and he hits it fairly deep. It's going to be taken by Abbott at the 16 to the 20. Running right to the 25, has room. At the 30, shakes a tackle. 35, cuts back at the 40, knocked out of bounds at about the 43-yard line. Outstanding return by Chip Abbott, and Newman will have great field position to start the second half with a 14-point lead. Peyton Manning leading his team back out onto the field. In the first half, some outstanding numbers compiled by the Newman Greenies as we showed you the total yardage. Johnson, seven carries, 57 yards, and a, a touchdown, two receptions, a 15-yard TD reception included. Chip Abbott, four catches, 38 yards. Manning under center with a single setback behind him and the give to Johnson running right inside the tackle 45 pops it to the 50 the 45 the 40 and he stepped out of bounds at about the 36 yard line Johnson nearly breaking it big play to start the half though and a first down as Cameron Johnson is out of bounds at the 36 yard line and picks up on the play 20 yards and that's a big start for Newman Cameron Johnson using his uh, block as to his uh, to his advantage and uh, bouncing outside again showing some surprising uh, explosion out of the hole, getting outside, stiff arming the defender and getting down 20 yard gain. It's now a first and 10 at the 37 yard line for the Greenies. Manning under center, he was 11 of 13, 116 yards and a score in the first half. First down, 10 yards to go, Manning rolling left. Stopping, looking, throwing over the middle, passing complete in and out of the hands of Brundage, down and about the 14 yard line. Brundage has outstanding hands. He usually catches about everything you throw near him, we're told, but that time couldn't quite pull it in. The offensive front for Newman 
has Neil Ryan, Eric Swanson, Kevin Singerman, Esteban Gershanik, and Shale Wolfson up front. Not big, but good. The fullback is Sean Greenberg, Cameron Johnson at tailback. Chris Chip Abbott has had a fine half of football. Nathan Stibbs outstanding, and Robert Brundage, whom you just saw, second and 10. Newman at the 36, twin receivers left. The tight end, Brundage tucked in on the right side. The eye formation, Manning, play fakes, rolling left, looking, stopping, throwing, sideline, pass, diving effort, and it is caught. Caught for a first down by Abbott. Outstanding catch by Abbott. On the tips of his fingers, Renee, he is able to reach out, catch that football, and step out of bounds before he was out of the field to play with the football. Great job by Abbott. Showing some great agility, and Peyton plants and fires. And I'll tell you what, that was not an easy pass to catch. He was going one way up in the air and caught it, as you mentioned, with his fingertips. Great wrist, great strength in his wrist to bring that ball down, and a great catch. First and 10 for the Greenies, deep in uh, Episcopal territory. 12-yard gain on the replay. Uh, our TV audience could see he had one foot in bond. That's all that is necessary under Federation rules. First and 10, the 24-yard line. And the eye formation once more. They give to Johnson. Bucks it straight ahead. Fights his way down to about the 22-yard line. Has a couple of yards. Ran into some traffic there up front. Into this front with David Peachy and Brian Jubin. Jaron McWright, the nose guard. Jeremy Burrell and Kincaid Jackson up front for Episcopal. Second down. We'll call it seven yards to go. They mark it at the 21-yard line. The linebackers are Beckwith and Brewer. And the secondary is Williams, Stein, Underwood, and Flowers. Stein was hurt in the first half, though, and we haven't seen him return. They have Flowers, Underwood, Williams, and Kirkpatrick back there. Manning off the play fake, in the pocket, stops, throws right side, pass caught perfectly. Inside the 15 and down on the 14-yard line is Nathan Stibbs. Picture perfect throw from Manning. Eight yards and an apparent first down for Newman. I say apparent because it looks like he has about the 13-yard line on the mark, and the chains are moving. It's a first down, Greenies. Peyton Manning throwing the ball better than you see some NFL pros, uh, some NFL quarterbacks throw on Sunday afternoons. Wind up and firing frozen rope right where it needs to be thrown to Stibbs, and Stibbs uh, makes the catch. You can tell there's a lot of timing between the receivers and the quarterback here at Newman. Uh, the mark of, of a lot of hard work and some athletic ability. Ball went and Stibbs to the left. Brundage tucked in on the right side. Wide side, the left side of the field. And the pitch goes to Holmes. Holmes is hit hard and dropped. Dropped near the line of scrimmage in a very fine play defensively. Was made by 66, Brian Jubin, their best defensive lineman, the two-way performer. Jubin hit him and locked and brought him down. And Jubin coming from his right defensive tackle, a senior, just wrapped him up and uh, really skated along the line of scrimmage and, and hit him. Uh, Holmes tried to twist back, but Jubin had him in his clutches, and he went down uh, with, with no gain at all. 9.42 and counting third quarter, 21-7. Newman driving with a 14-point lead. Second and 10 from the 13. Twin receivers right in the eye formation behind Manning. Fakes the draw. Now has to roll right under pressure. Throws in the flat. The pass is caught, but a short gain, if any, Caught by Sean Greenberg, who had to go up high to get it. Pass was just a tad high. He catches it near the line of scrimmage and, in fact, goes down at the 15-yard line, and that's a loss on the play of about a yard. And it will be third down. We'll call it 12 yards to go, so it's a loss of two. I guess the offense would have been better served had Greenberg dropped the ball, but he tried to make the catch. You know, when the ball comes your way, you're not maybe not aware of where he was and just couldn't get his feet underneath him. Kenny and went down for maybe a yard loss. It's third and about 12 facing the Greenies. The Valmont building, a beautiful sight opposite the press box here, and an interested spectator looking on from the third floor there. And now a whistle and a timeout taken by Newman. So a timeout with 8.51 to play in the third. It's 21-7, Newman on top of Episcopal. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. 8.51 to play in the third. It's 21-7. to seven. Ken Trey, Hannah Owen, Renee Nato, Lance Jacob. Newman on top, but they play a third down and about 12 yards to go from the 15-yard line. Greeny's in the huddle. The Knights just coming out onto the field. Incidentally, that shot of the spectator in the Valmont building across the way was the coach for Episcopal. That's where they place their coaches on top of buildings there with the setup. It's a pretty good vantage point, actually. Probably got a little air condition working there, too. Not a bad way to watch the game. 
Twin receivers to either side of the field for Newman. Manning back in the pocket, deep drop, stopping, throwing, timing pattern, Abbott toward the end zone, caught, and out of bounds at the one. Out of bounds, Chip Abbott has it at the one, 14 yards and a first and goal. Perfectly timed pattern from Manning to Abbott. Yeah, Ken, and he released the ball before Abbott about three or four steps before Abbott even made his cut, and it's it's nearly impossible to stop a, a timing pass like this. Well thrown, Abbott making the catch. He did get maybe, he looks like he may have got a, no, he didn't get in the end zone, but you got to get the football passed across the plane. They were knocking at the door with fo first and goal now with just a sniffle or two out, outside of that goal. Our replay clearly showing he didn't get in. Craig Clayson in at fullback. Johnson the tailback, first and goal. Johnson is hit in the backfield, shakes that tackle, but is hit again and dropped in the backfield for a loss of about two by Steven Underwood, who continues to impress. Shook the initial tackle, but then Underwood brought him down at the three. And as you mentioned, Brewer with great penetration, slowing him down for Underwood. Brewer with the initial penetration, he is shooting through a gap, putting the shoulder pad on Cameron Johnson, showing some outstanding ability just to get past his knee, did go down. Underwood makes sure with a, uh, a sure tackle. Second and goal from the three. Single receiver right. Everyone else is tight. They give to Johnson running left, and he works those knees and gets it down to about the one. He's not in. Johnson to the one where it will be third down and goal to go as Episcopal gives ground grudgingly. Brian Jubin makes the stop. And Cameron Johnson plays the role of a mole as he burrows through the left side of the line, running behind Neil Ryan and Eric Swanson, the left side of the line for the Newman Greenies. And uh, Cameron Johnson just tucks those shoulder pads down, squares his shoulders, puts his head down, tries to get as much as he possibly can. And uh, boy, he met a wall of white jerseys right near the goal line, held him shy of the goal. Third down, goal to go from the one yard line. Johnson dots the eye once more. Manning will sneak it. This time he's in. Peyton Manning takes it in. His second running touchdown of the game. And Newman adds to its lead. It's 27-7 with the extra point still to come. Well, Kenny, who would have thought that uh, Peyton Manning would have been more dangerous with his feet than he would with his arm thus far? 28 points, and he's accounted for one via the air and two on the ground. So Peyton Manning has proved to be quite a, a weapon on the ground for the Newman Greenies. You can see him using that 200-pound uh, body at 6'5 frame, stretching over the goal line, a surprising strength for the uh, senior. And you can see why the lights of so many colleges around the country are uh, begging for his uh, sign, name of the dotted line. Buckman with the extra point, hits it through perfectly. So Buckman's four for four, timeout on the field, 6.59 to play in the third quarter with our score, Newman 28 and Episcopal seven. We're back with more in just a moment. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. 6.59 to play in the third quarter. 28 to seven, Newman on top of Episcopal. Ken Trey, Hannah Lowe, and Renee Nato. Another impressive drive by the Greenies. Sure is, 11 plays, 58 yards, consuming four minutes and 57 seconds off the clock, uh, culminated by a one-yard run by Peyton Manning, 28 to seven. Jimmy Williams and Taylor Bunch are deep to receive the kickoff of Buckman. Takes a long approach and puts his foot into it and hits a bouncer that is knocked down and now picked up by the short man, and that's Scott Kirkpatrick. Kirkpatrick is across the 30-yard line and out to about the 32 where he's brought down. And that's where Episcopal will start this drive. First down, 10 yards to go. The stop made by 48, Scott McClave. Here comes Underwood onto the field for the Knights, needing to get something generated. They scored early in the ball game and haven't done much ever since. And it's going to have to be this young man's strong arm that brings them back if they're going to have a chance. Steven Underwood, all 6'4", 210 pounds of him, with receivers to either side and a double slot as well. Now motion and the give is to the slot man running left. Griff Williams trying to get outside but cannot. He is trapped and down at about the 34 yard line. Outstanding defensive pursuit getting up off the bottom of the stack, making the stop was 82. Jimmy Robert, the senior weak side linebacker, doing a good job. Yes, and Jimmy really strung it out, made sure that he ran from uh, east to west, not north to south, and really, really made sure with, when he got some help, Roberts stringing out just a little bit and got some help from the defensive backs right here. And uh, namely, that was number 19. Sandy Bates came up to put a helmet on him, stopping him second and long way to go for Episcopal. 
on second and eight. Straight ahead, they give to the fullback. Across the 35 to about the 36. Maybe two yards for Beckwith, but just not much there. Newman has really shut down the run since early in the ball game when Episcopal had had some success. It will be third down now and about six yards to go. Kenny, the winner of this game faces the winner of St. Charles Northeast. So uh, next week is going to be no easy task for whoever comes out of this game a winner. Four wide receivers set. See if Newman comes with a blitz on third down. Six yards to go. Here they come. Straight up the middle, forcing Underwood to run right. Stopping. Can't throw. Now he'll keep. Underwood evades a tackle. He has a first down across the 45 and out near midfield. He showed some very good mobility there and some good judgment did Stephen Underwood as he gets it out to midfield. 14 yards and a first down. The matchup next week that we spoke of. The winner of this game, likely Newman against the winner of Northeast and St. Charles. Likely Northeast. And that would be a matchup of two unbeaten football teams as we watch Underwood do his thing once more. Yes, and you can see McClave and Tiford really coming. Tiford, he just eluded the clutches of Tiford diving for his ankles right here. And Underwood showing some surprising mobility and some speed getting outside, making a nice gain first down for Episcopal. Clayson driving him out of bounds in midfield. High formation. And the pitch running left. Jimmy Williams hit in the backfield. He's dropped. He loses a yard. Outstanding defensive play by Craig Clayson once more. Their leading tacklers showing you why. He had an interception against Hannon earlier this year. He's 6'1", 193 pounds, and he's a junior. Yes, Clayson, don't be surprised by the junior's diminutive size for a linebacker. He puts a good hard stop, puts his shoulder into the running back. This guy bench presses 275. Not bad for a junior linebacker for the Newman Greenies. As you mentioned, the leading tackler for Newman. Jimmy Williams has had trouble getting untracked. Eight carries, minus five yards to date. Second and 11, Episcopal, their own 49. Beckwith, the fullback, is hit at the line of scrimmage. Fights his way to midfield, but that's all. The initial hit by Scott McClave, and then he got a lot of help from his teammates. Tiford was there defensively, and so was Baldwin Montgomery, and it will be third down and 10 once more. McClave doing an outstanding job. Kenny, uh, he's played an outstanding game for the defense, and there were times when he took on a couple of blockers and allowed one of his other teammates to make the tackle. He's also shut down anything out inside, so McClave having an outstanding job inside for the Greenies. Steve Baranich and his staff looking on third and 10. They have a very fine staff. Tucker Peavy, Wade Simino, and Chris Counts assisting Steven Baranich. Third down and 10, and the give is straight ahead. That's not going to do much. Two yards to the 48 Newman territory, and that's all. With the fullback, Beckwith, the kind of a surprising call, but it didn't fool Newman, and now it's a punting situation for Episcopal. You see Underwood handing the ball off right there, and really not much of a hole from the outside. The right defensive end for Newman, number 85, did an outstanding job. Harlan Bush uh, putting the stop on the Episcopal runner. And they're lining up in a fake punt situation, and the quarterback was deep to receive it. However, an offensive player moved prior to the snap, a shotgun snap to yeah, Underwood, who stayed in the start. game, and that's going to be a false start. Dead ball. False start, 22 white. Still fourth down. And it is a false start on Brandon and Henry, and thus go those best laid plans. <laughs> and now Episcopal will likely punt it away as Brewer will drop deep. Tried to cross Newman up there, but could not execute. Abbott will drop deep to receive along with Stibbs for the Greenies. Brewer to punt it away, standing at his 32. High snap fielded by Brewer, plenty of time. Hits it very, very high towards Stibbs. Fair catch call for, he drops the football, it's loose. Stibbs, however, falls on it. Back at about the 17 yard line, so he pounced on that thing immediately. Secured it, Newman. Looking to secure a win well on their way, leading 28-7 here with 3.37 to go in the third quarter. And if they do anything right here, if Newman uh, happens to score this possession, that may be the final nail in the coffin. You can, mention, you can see right here where Stibbs does call for a fair catch, makes it quite obvious, raising his hand wildly, but just can't find the handle to it. And that's a free ball right there. He luckily jumps on it, pounces on it for the Greenies. They retain possession deep in their own territory. First and 10, the 17 yard line officially. Manning under center. Split backs behind him, takes the snap. 
And he'll pitch it here to Johnson with room. To the 20, to the 25, breaks a tackle with the 30. To the 35, 40, to the 43 yard line, breaking tackles all over the place. Cameron Johnson rambles for 26 and a first down. Okay, I'm going to tell you who he reminds me of. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, show you how old I am. He reminds me of Don Nottingham for some reason. Don Nottingham. <laughs> Cameron, Cameron Johnson does, and Boo Mason up here with us. He remembers him as well. Don Nottingham is the kind of guy who, he wasn't the fastest guy, but he just produced yards, and great pitch by Peyton Manning out to Cameron Johnson. and See what you can do with it. Covers up the ball and just bounces off of tacklers and really does an outstanding job. Not the fastest guy, but very productive. Manning back in the pocket to throw on first down. Throws, pass, caught. That's Johnson to the midfield and down to the Episcopal 45. He has another first down, 12 yards on the fast. I'll tell you what, he's a little faster than you think he is. He can run a little bit. And Cameron Johnson, the sheriff of Nottingham, the Baltimore Colt himself. <laughs> I'm not sure if Cameron would like that comparison. Don Nottingham. And that's not a knock on Don Nottingham, but he was a bowling ball type of guy. But uh, Cameron Johnson, really very productive, and uh, he's silently, you know, so much attention is focused on Peyton Manning. But Cameron Johnson is not only a good runner, he's an outstanding receiver and blocker for the Greenies. Boosh says he reminds him of Reggie Reginelli, who, of course, played here. Holmes in the game at tailback now, first and 10, the 44-yard line. Manning on the option keeper, and he gets it down to about the 40. Well, how about that? Showed you that he'll run the ball occasionally, as he did earlier. Desmond Beckwith on the stop. Now, Peyton hasn't run the ball a whole lot here at Newman, and that's by design. He has a great career ahead of him, and, and certainly you don't want to let people take a whole lot of shots at you, but when he can, he's very rangy, and he's strong. He wants to show you he can run it a la Archie, Dad, and uh, does an outstanding job, picking up about four yards before he skates to the to the turf, and uh, it's a second and about six yards to go, but it is another dimension to that Newman offense. Archie was a great running quarterback. Peyton strength definitely throwing the football, and his dad could throw it pretty well, too. Peyton now showed option, now drops back, looks, throws deep, sideline, Stibbs, and overthrown. Near the goal line, Stibbs had a couple of steps on the coverage man there, who was number eight, and that's Jimmy Williams, Jr., but the pass was just a little bit tall, and it will be third down and six. So they showed you the option play, and then they... Looked like they were running lead option again, but then Manning broke it off, dropped straight back, and had a receiver. And he aired it out, put a lot of air underneath it. So many people have been asking, where is Peyton Manning going to go to school? Well, he does have visits set up for Florida, Michigan, and Tennessee with uh, possibly Florida State, Ole Miss, and Texas, and maybe looking at uh, Notre Dame as well with uh, Tulane and LSU as unofficial visits. On third down, Manning back in the pocket to throw, stops, looks, throws, sideline, and the pass is caught at about the 31-yard line by Stibbs, who made a nice catch, and that's a first down in front of the defender, who was number 18, Earl Turner. It's a first down for Newman as the aerial show continues for Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning with that out pattern to Stibbs, difficult throw to make, and Stibbs makes the catch. He's averaging six catches per game, and not only is Stibbs an outstanding football player, he's an outstanding baseball pitcher on the Newman Greeny team. Speaking of pitching, that pitch was down and away, and that's where you want it. <laughs> Hitters aren't going to hit that, and in the case of football, the DBs aren't going to pick that. First and 10, the 31-yard line. Twin receivers either side, and the give to Johnson running right. Cameron across the 30 and down to about the 28 as three yards before he's slacked down by Rick Massengale, the senior defensive back. It will be second and seven, and Newman's starting to wear the Knights down, Renee. Kenny, I want to point out that I wasn't, uh, here goes, uh, I almost said Don Nottingham. Here goes Cameron Johnson, really productive. He squares his shoulders and, and great running style. Got a good lean and, and really powers into the defender. He not only takes a blow, he can really deliver one. Manning is uh, 7 out of 21 for 173 yards and a touchdown toss. He also ran for a couple as well. Well, if he's 7 out of 21, I'm, 17. I'm blind. 17 out of 21. Did I say 7? <laughs> you did. I'm sorry. <laughs> Here's another completion. This one to Turner. Turner inside the 20, inside the 15, fumbles near the out-of-bounds marker, but comes back up with it at about the 13. He's got about 15 yards and a first down before Flowers brings him down. And that's how many completions now? 18 out of 22. So Thank he's you. only four. In fact, he only has four interceptions <laughs> for the entire season. Uh, you can see him making a toss. Uh, Peyton Manning for the TV audience rolling left, showing some nice mobility, throwing across the bow to the tight end, Turner, who's not a bad receiver as well. 6'3", 200-pound junior. Knows what to do with it. He does have the ball stripped away, but uh, Newman does pounce on it and keep possession. He's had touchdown catches as Turner against Country Day, also against St. Martin's earlier this year. First and 10 from the 12. 
They give to Johnson, cutting inside the tackle, inside the 10, inside the 5, and down near the 2-yard line goes Cameron Johnson. He's close to a first down. He is really running hard here this evening. Other than that fumble earlier, he's been as impressive as he's been all season long, and he has brought the third quarter to a close. At the end of three quarters from Lupin Field, our score is Newman 28 and Episcopal 7. We're back with our final quarter of action in just a moment. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Ken Trey Han, Renee Nato, fourth quarter is set to begin, 28-7, Newman on top. And we get a chance to watch that last run by Johnson. Boy, he's sticking it in there in good shape. Cameron Johnson really running behind, but he drags two tacklers right here with him, and one of them was Steve Underwood, so the quarterback for Episcopal got a ride. On second and one of the three, Johnson running left off, tackle scores! Cameron Johnson off left tackle behind the blocks of Neil Ryan, and Eric Swanson takes it in, and Newman has a 34-7 lead on yet another score by Cameron Johnson. Cameron Johnson have an outstanding game, and he just would not be denied as he smelled that goal line, Kenny. When he was hit, he spun, and, and maybe the, the uh, momentum carried him in, but really a great effort by Cameron Johnson. Buckman will try the extra point as Johnson has scored for Newman, and for Cameron, that's his third touchdown of the game. Buckman's been perfect thus far. Let's see if he can keep that record intact. The snap a good, the ball down, and the kick is no good. Off to the left, good pressure there. And Buckman fails, Underwood had the great pressure there. Time out on the field, 11.55 to play with our score. Newman, 34, and Episcopal, 7. We'll return in just a moment. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. A chance to see the touchdown again via television. And that's Cameron, the bowling ball, Johnson, spinning inside. Great move, getting him into the end zone. That uh, was play was finally a final play of a nine-play, 83-yard drive, taking three minutes and 42 seconds off the clock. Three-yard dive by Cameron Johnson. Cameron Johnson now with 15 totes, Kenny, 100. 21 yards, two TD runs, and a TD reception to go along with it. What a big night the senior has had. Buckman will kick it off, and deep to receive will be Griff Williams, along with Taylor Bunch. Buckman hits it deep. Short man knocks it down, picks it up at about the 15, up the middle to the 20, the 25, the 30, and out to about the 33-yard line goes Jimmy Williams, Jr., before he is wrestled down. For Newman by number 23, Corey Morton, a junior defensive back, and Episcopal has at first and 10 their own 33, trailing 34-7 with 11.45 to play. Well, they have their work cut out for him now, and Underwood, you, and I tell you what, he's going to be passing the ball now. Uh, they average about 25 to 30 times per game tossing it, and you see Underwood right now who really be really, really tested. And uh, he hasn't thrown an interception, as I recall, so far tonight. He's got 20 on the season. But uh, they're going to really, really uh, pin their ear back and uh, come at him defensively for uh, Newman. Receivers to either side. Single setback behind Underwood in motion right. Comes Griff Williams, and now they run the reverse back to the left side. And now they pitch it back to the quarterback. And a long throw by Underwood, and this pass is tipped and almost intercepted down at about the 36-yard line. They ran a reverse pitch to the quarterback and then tried to throw deep to Brandon Henry, but not fooled on the play and making an outstanding defensive play to tip it away for Newman. Was number 25, and that's Walker Creech, the senior. A little dipsy, too. Everyone touched it, but the left guard. I tell you, about four or five guys touched it right here, Kenny. Uh, getting back to Underwood. Underwood really tried to plan here and throw it and didn't throw it very well. He put too much air underneath it and allowed uh, Creech to get back and, and knock it away. And would have been a sure touchdown had he thrown it a little bit further. Long throw to make. Second and 10, the 33. Underwood quick drop this time. Wants to throw and does, and the pass is caught. And there goes Henry. Good job to the 45. Cuts back, stops, and goes down at about the 48-yard line. So 15 yards, that's Underwood to Brandon Henry, the all-district receiver, their leading receiver, and it's a first down for the Episcopal Knights. That was Scott Kirkpatrick in there, number seven, a new quarterback, spells Underwood and comes in and makes a completion. It wasn't the prettiest toss, but it got to his designation. And Yeah, they did sneak him in as we see it on the replay here. And uh, so Kirkpatrick throws a Billy Kilmer type ball over to Henry Ooh. and he turns it up. <laughs> hey, he threw a lot of completions. I'm taking a shot at everybody, Kenny. <laughs> you really are. <laughs> You're having quite a night. Here's Underwood in the pocket. Wants to throw deep sideline and the pass is tipped and caught 
part of the 26-yard line off of the tip. The ball was tipped initially by Wamsley, and then it was caught for a big play and a first down by Episcopal's Brandon Henry. And Wamsley had three picks last time these two teams met. He had his eyes. Boys, biggest saucer is ready for this one here. And uh, Underwood throws it kind of high, and Walmsley just misread it, bounces it into Henry, and Henry's just waiting reci recipient right there for, for a nice catch, and uh, first and 10 for Episcopal. At the 26-yard line, officially. Single setback, Jimmy Williams. Underwood wants to throw. Plenty of time, stop, looks, throws, pass, caught, perfect throw inside the 10 and down to the eight. Very well-timed throw, and the pass was caught once again by Henry, who's had a big series here. Creech on the stop. We head downfield level for this report now from Lance Jacob. Gentlemen, we all know how well Peyton Manning performs on the field. Right now, you're looking at him and Coach Frank Gendusa. He's really a leader, folks. He can, As soon as he comes off the field, he's talking to his players, talking to his coaches, trying to get every edge he can to find out how to run the offense. He's a complete player. He's a leader. And... Uh, all, all indications are true. This kid's going to be a great quarterback. Back up to you. First down, goal to go, the nine-yard line. 10-07 and counting in the ball game. Episcopal trying to cut into a 34-7 deficit, and now a timeout will be taken by the Knights. Timeout with 10-02 to play. We'll take a timeout as well with our score, Newman 34 and Episcopal 7. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Good look at Steve Baranich on the sideline with 10.02 to play, giving instructions to his Knights, who trail 34-7. Ken Trahan along with Renee Nato and Lance Jacob. And Underwood and Kirkpatrick have thrown the ball pretty well on this series. We really expected them to throw more here tonight, Renee, and they got away from the passing game a little bit, perhaps tried to run it a little bit too much. Passing is their forte. It really is, and, and I think the... Uh, Greenies really dictated they get back to the, uh, the passing game again. They just shut down the running game completely, Kenny. First and goal, the nine-yard line officially. Twin receivers left. Single setback is Beckwith. Quick drop. Underwood wants to throw deep out. Has a man. It's caught, and that is a touchdown. The pass complete to Griff Williams, who pranced into the end zone untouched. And Underwood hits Williams for the score. 34-13 now with 9.54 to play. And we'll see if they go for one or two here. Well, I'll tell you what, I guess you get points as soon as you can. Uh, touchdowns have been uh, scarce for the Episcopal team. Crossing pattern here, two receivers, one going in, one going out. Cleared the, the avenue outside for the receiver. Uh, wide open for Episcopal and a touchdown for Underwood. And the extra point attempt is up and good by Griff Williams. Timeout on the field, 9.54 to play with our score. Newman 34 and Episcopal 14. We're back in 30 seconds on the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Well, the Graney sideline looking on. Their lead has been cut into. It's now 34-14 with 9.54 to play, and that was an impressive drive, Renee. Underwood really had an outstanding, uh, did an outstanding job leading that team down the field. Five plays, 67 yards. One of those big plays, a couple of passes. One of those going to receiver, that was uh, Griff Williams. And, of course, Henry, a couple of passes to them. Two minutes and one second off the clock. Underwood with a nine-yard toss to Griff Williams, putting, uh, putting the... Uh, Episcopal team within 20 points, 34 to 14 late in the fourth quarter. And they're lining up for the onside kick. Here it comes, but it takes a Newman bounds and is fielded down around midfield by a Newman player. Episcopal didn't quite get the bounce off the toe of Griff Williams, and Newman comes up with the football, and it looks like Brian Turner, the tight end, a good hands man, gets it at about the 49-yard line with 9.54 to play. That's where Newman will start this drive, first and 10. And we'll see what faces are in the game. Peyton Manning still in there. And this game's not over yet. It's a 20-point game, so Newman has to stick with its guns here, at least at this point. At the, with the firepower that, that Underwood and his offense from Episcopal has shown, it really is Cameron Johnson. 15 carries, 121 yards, two touchdowns, one catch, one, two runs, and an outstanding game uh, a candidate for the trophy at the end of the game. Sure is. Peyton Manning, the pitch to Holmes, running left, trying to cut off the block. He is hit and down in the backfield for a loss of a couple and a great play by Rodney Flowers. He took out the lead blocker and the ball carrier in the same motion. Rodney Flowers really with a great defensive play. As you said, Kenny shoved the blocker back into the, the, uh, the runner, and really he really stuffed this entire thing from the get-go and knocked uh, 
uh, Greenberg back into Holmes and making a great stop. Second and about 11, 12 yards to go. 9.22 and counting in the ball game. 34 to 14, Newman, second down, 11 yards to go. They play it from their 48-yard line. Manning, quick drop, stops, throws in the flat pass, caught by Stibbs. Stibbs is wrapped up, and he is going to be stopped. Stopped for a short gain of about three. Good job defensively of hitting and locking by the DB. Looked like Scott Kirkpatrick was there initially for Episcopal, and that's a good job because Stibbs has the ability to take that one and turn it up the field. And Kirkpatrick, the junior, just locked on to him and wouldn't let him go. And, uh, boy, I tell you, when you're out there with your feet locked, you're open game for anybody, and he's lucky he didn't get a good shot from one of the onrushing Episcopal defenders. Third down, we'll call it nine yards to go from midfield, 8.37 and counting in the ball game. Manning under center with split backs behind him. Barking signals, now may have checked off with the line of scrimmage, and the DBs back off a bit. On third down, Manning with a snap, back in the pocket to throw, stops, throws, sideline, and the pass is caught close to a first down, a heck of a catch, reaching back by Chip Abbott. He is very close to his first down. What a great throw and catch there. Well, this Chip Abbott has shown us some very good stuff tonight. Yes, he has, and, and as we mentioned, he's known as a basketball player, being a point guard on the basketball team, showing some great hands, some great strength in his wrists and fingertips, and uh, Tulane is taking a very close look at this athlete, and, and he's only... It, He's only been playing football for a season. He may have a great future ahead of him, not only as a uh, as a receiver, as a punt return. He's returned three punts for touchdowns and three kickoffs for touchdowns for the Greenies this year. They're going to bring the sticks across the field. I do believe it's that close. As Steve Baranich is out on the field as, as usual. He is a real animated guy. He coaches every second of the game. Very nice gentleman. Provided us with a lot of information. We really appreciate that. We want to thank Steve for that. We want to thank all the folks involved with Episcopal High School for making our task a lot easier here this evening. Their headmaster, the Reverend Paul Hancock, assistant headmaster, Mrs. Ann Mercer Cornegy, the athletic director, Clanny Duplishin. Change coming across the field while we're at it, of course. Again, our thanks to Boo Mason from Newman for making our stay a very pleasant one here tonight. Easy job here. Also to Scott McLeod, the headmaster of Isidore Newman School and the upper school principal Bill Andrews and the chains having been brought across the field and they reveal that Newman has in fact gotten the first down inside the 41 yard line. You can see the perspiration on the back of Peyton Manning uh, indicates what kind of how hot and humid it is out here. Chip Abbott, seven receptions, 73 yards and really done an outstanding job finding the crease running some outstanding routes for the 4-5 sprinter. Stibbs and Abbott to the right, split backs behind Peyton Manning who takes the snap and gives straight ahead. Fighting his way down to about the 37, perhaps the 36 it looked like David Holmes. Or was it Greenberg? That was Greenberg, I believe, the fullback. Sean Greenberg on the carry, picks up about four and it's second and six. The way they platoon here, Kenny, I wouldn't be surprised to see Will Bishop, uh, Robbie Potthorst, and uh, Chris Mooney come in, enter the game pretty soon with a 20-point lead in just 7 minutes and 35 seconds to go here in the contest. Uh, Newman likes to use a lot of people. There's Coach Reginelli. He's been around here for 26 long good years. Chris Mooney now in the game at the fullback spot. Lines up now in the up position in the eye in front of David Holmes. The tailback on second and six. Receivers to either side. They give to Mooney. Mooney has room. 35-30. 25 with speed. Wrapped up and down to about the 23-yard line. He picks up 14 yards and a first down. Rodney Flowers on the stop. And Chris Mooney. Really an aggressive, good inside runner. And, you know, sometimes when you bring the uh, the support team in here, you're in more trouble because they want to show the coaches why they should be playing. So sometimes it's better if you keep the starters in. Giving the ball to Mooney, an inside run here. His forte is really running between the tackles. He knows where to find a goal, uh, looking and running as he's looking and great, squares his shoulders and powers into a defender of Green, uh, Underwood, I should say, and a great gain for Mooney the junior. First down, 10 yards to go from the 23-yard line. 6.45 and counting. Manning, quick drop. They may run the uh, little reverse, and they do. A Statue of Liberty. Abbott breaks a tackle, 20. Fights off another tackle to 15. Is hit and fumbles, and the ball is picked up by whom? Episcopal had their hands on it, but did they hold on? A Newman player is down there also, and the ball is recovered by Newman. And what a job by number 70 for Newman to get that football. Michael Altmont, the junior offensive lineman, somehow managed to get that thing back after a night player had first dibs. Kenny, I tell you what, 
They didn't work this play at practice. They worked this in Archie's backyard somewhere, you know, uh, because this takes an awful lot of timing to drop the ball, and as Abbott's coming behind Peyton Manning, it really looked nice. It really is a, a, a great trick play, and boy, I tell you, it's well-timed to have a play like that come off without a hitch. Abbott showed you some good open field running. Did fumble, however, but Newman comes up with it. It's second down and six from the 20 with 5.50 and counting to play. Manning the snap and the option play a flag down as he pitches to Holmes running left, and Holmes is in trouble and down in the backfield for a loss of a yard. Great penetration by Rodney Flowers, and he had help from Brian Jubin. This Episcopal defense holding tough, and we're going to see that previous play, the Statue of Liberty. Green, both wide outs not set. And the way Peyton just drops the ball, it's well-timed. And I tell you what, that play has taken quite a lot of time and effort to make that play work per perfect. And uh, it worked perfectly, except for the fact that Abbott did fumble the ball. Newman does get it back. The one thing I'm impressed, you can see the, the pursuit by Episcopal. The one thing they have done defensively, great pursuit, and they, they shut it down inside out. They use that, that sideline very, very well and, and make, the, uh, make the ball carrier head for the sideline. But they do a great job tackling inside out. So it's third down and eight yards to go. 21 yard line, the line of scrimmage. High formation behind Peyton Manning, receivers to either side. Manning the snap, play fake, stops, looks, throws right sideline, and the pass is caught. Perfect throw, eluding a tackler at the 10 is Stibbs. He's down near the five yard line. There goes a portable fence down. Everybody's down, <laughs> and it's a first down and goal for Newman. Oh my. Oh wow, what a throw. Out of the out, over the outstretched hands, and it looks like uh, we may have an injured player here, and that's Stibbs that made the stop, and uh, he did run into the portable fence. Hopefully it's nothing serious, but uh, he is right now receiving some medical attention from the trainer of Newman. It looks like he's gonna be fine. He's standing up, and they're checking him, and he took one step and stopped, and hopefully he will be fine. Boy, he's a terrific ball player, Nathan Stibbs. He's the leading receiver in double-A in the entire Metro New Orleans area. Second overall in all classifications. Came in with 52 catches, 958 yards. He's over 1,000 now as we watch him make the catch. And watch this. He ducked away from a tackle, managed to get a few more yards out of it. Then he's going to be hit, and eventually he's going to go out of bounds at about the four, and then watch this. Wow, Underwood really unloaded on him, and boy, Underwood and Stibbs go crashing into the fence. Fortunately, uh, neither one was seriously hurt, uh, although Stibbs did have to get some attention. But uh, it's just, I think, a shot they just ran into the fence. But Underwood came from across the field. And I guess as a quarterback, you get a chance to unload on some of these guys that's taking shots at you, and Underwood took advantage. Very slight limp for Nathan. I think he'll be fine, but we may not see him the rest of the way. Newman seemingly with this game in hand. Well, that was a great throw by Manning once more. First down goal to go from the seven-yard line. Single receiver left, and everybody else is tight. That's Montgomery to the left side. Holmes dots the eye, and he gets the pitch running right behind the blocker. Skirts outside, back inside, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. David Holmes from seven yards out, and Newman increases its lead to 40-14. to 14. I don't want that touchdown to go without notice that Craig Clawson really with an outstanding block on the lead blocker. He plays defense as a strong side linebacker and really unloaded. You see him coming from the fullback position, really unloads into Underwood to free safety. Uh, Holmes reads that block, cuts it back, and hits that crease, showing a great burst of speed into the end zone. And, and Holmes scores and shows some great moves for the Southmore. As we said, the quickest running back they have, and, and Newman increases their lead, Kenny. Buckman for the extra point. Good snap, ball down, good kick. Time out on the field, 5.07 to play in the ball game with our score, Isidore Newman 41 and Episcopal 14. Back in just a moment, this is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Five oh seven to play, 41-14, Newman on top of Episcopal, and Another drive, perhaps the crowning achievement in the ball game for Newman. Yes, it probably is. Eight plays, 51 yards for the Greenies marching, uh, taking four minutes and 46 seconds off the clock. The final blow was Holmes, David Holmes, the sophomore running back, uh, skirting into the end zone from three yards out, making the score 41-14, to 14, commanding lead over the Episcopal Knights, and uh, that may have been the final blow right there. Here's the kickoff by Buckman. Again, a bouncer fielded by a short man at the 25-yard line. Massengale to the 30, running 
running left. He's going to be tackled at about the 33, so an eight-yard return and a good stop on the play for Newman by number 49, Robbie Pothorst. And it will be first and 10 for the Knights at their own 33. 4.59 to play, 41-14 our score. And, of course, we have a number of considerations for our AAA Trophies player of the game. And really does have to focus on two guys, though, Peyton Manning and Cameron Johnson, quite frankly. You can almost flip a coin, Kenny. Both of them had outstanding games. You know, Peyton Manning with some great throws. He led that offense. Cameron Johnson, with just individual effort, got him a lot of yards, over 120 yards tonight. First and 10, the 33-yard line. Underwood back in the pocket to throw. Wants to throw a screen. Does to Jimmy Williams. Williams to the 30. Williams to the 35. Breaks a tackle. Trying to get outside. Cuts back, and he's down near the 40-yard line. Picks up about seven yards on the play. Showing some good ability there, does Jimmy Williams, Jr. Well, if we see this replay, Avery Mosley from his safety position comes in, misses the tackle in the backfield, and pursues well enough to make the tackle down the field. So, I mean, he deserves a lot of credit. Avery, Avery Mosley, the number 20 for the Newman Green. He's really a great hustle, and uh, the, the uh, make that a linebacker. Great hustle for the sophomore. Oh, well, Jimmy Williams Jr. has got a great future. He's just a freshman. Second and three for the 40. Underwood under pressure. Rolling left may run. A flag is down. Stops now. Throws. Deep sideline. Has a man caught by Henry. Great throw and catch. Henry out of bounds with a flag. Down at the 22. The other flag will likely be against Episcopal. The second one will definitely be against Newman. This could be offsetting. Yeah, it looks like a great play. It's just coming back. Looks good in the highlight film, but Henry has that ability to get deep and surprising speed for the wide receiver for the Knights. Again, I, I really wonder if Episcopal had just thrown the ball all night long as we almost anticipated if this game wouldn't have been more competitive, Renee. They've shown the ability to throw. We got Holden, White, we got face mask, green. The penalty's offset. We're going to replay it down. So offsetting penalties, holding against Episcopal, face mask against Newman, and Underwood shows us some good ability. This kid's going to play some college ball somewhere. He really has. Running left, throwing across the bow, and showing some, some great uh, touch on the ball here, throwing down to Henry. And he had, a, he had to make a good throw right here in between defenders. He was covered deep and, and covered short and right in the hands of Henry. So on fourth down, it appears that Episcopal will go for it here. Nothing to lose, 3.51 to play. Play in from the sidelines. Underwood to the line of scrimmage. Sends Flowers and Henry to the left side and a slot man left also. Underwood, quick drop, wants to throw and does and the pass is tipped and it is caught. Great effort and a first down and Flowers caught it. Then he lost the ball but the turf caused the fumble according to the referee and as a result, that's a first down up at about the 46-yard line. Excellent effort by Rodney Flowers, who stayed with that one all the way. Let's head down field level for this report from Lance Jacob. Thank you, gentlemen. On field level now, Cameron Johnson has a deep thigh bruise on his right thigh. He won't see any more action tonight. He was not in the last offensive series for Newman. They're not going to take any chances. They want him rested for next week. And quickly, Nathan uh, Stibbs is going to be okay. Just the wind knocked out of him. No problems there. Back up to you. All right, Lance, thanks for the injury report. Back in the pocket, Underwood, heavy pressure, steps up. He's sacked at midfield, rather at the 40-yard line. Sacked on the play by Newman's number 33, Neil Bodenheimer, the junior linebacker. So Neil gets a big sack here, gets some air time, and pins Episcopal much further back. It's a loss of six yards, and it's second and 16 from their own 40. To show how they really Really breed these uh, great athletes up here right now. Newman has a freshman in there, a tackle named Clifton Grady, number 72. Looks like he's got a good future here. And boy, when you play as a freshman at this level, you got that's great experience. Underwood against the blitz again, rolling, stopping, heavy pressure, rolling left again. He's in big trouble. He throws it and it's incomplete. Managed to get it off, and that was an accomplishment in itself. Four green shirts around him, just all over the place. And in fact, he was knocked to the turf as he was throwing the football by. Justin York, the sophomore defensive end. And the blitz has been very effective for the Greenies. Neil Bodenheimer really coming strong, and you see Grady back there. You also see number 86, Chris Irwin, putting a lot of pressure. And uh, how he got it out of there, he, he used some wizardry to do it, Kenny, because I'll tell you what, he was surrounded by Indians. It's third and a long cab ride for a first down now. Some of the Knight fans looking on, a, a bit dejected, realizing their season is going to end tonight. Underwood under center, single setback. He's back in the pocket against the blitz to throw with time. Stops, throws, and the pass is tipped and incomplete. And around the Newman 47, a nice leaping effort there by Henry, but tight coverage on the play applied for Newman in the persons of 54, Bartley, 
And also back there was 20, and that is Scott Hall. Or rather, Avery Mosley, excuse me. Avery Mosley, got that right. Good coverage now, and I guess it's uh, it's not as difficult to uh, cover now when you know the team is going to pass. You just pin your, ear back, pin, pin your ears back as a defensive lineman and just put the heat on the quarterback, and as a defensive back, you know it's coming. You don't know where the ball is going to sail, but uh, Underwood really has a has a tough task ahead of him right now with just about two minutes and some change left to go here in the contest, Kenny. So it's fourth and 16 from the 40. They'll go for it. Eye formation, blitz coming. Underwood back in the pocket. Heavy pressure. He's hit and sacked back at the 30-yard line. And he had no chance. The sack made by Coleman Bartley, the sophomore linebacker. And he'll remember that for a long time. He's excited coming off the field. Wide eye, look at that. That says it all. That's what high school football is all about. It's great to watch these young men get excited and play the game for the love of the game. And Underwood had no chance. He really didn't. And uh, Bartley came shooting through a gap. And it really a good, uh, good, good effort here by Bartley. Got past the blocker and spun Underwood to the ground. And Underwood got, has to be dejected knowing his high school career has come to a finish right here at, uh, at the hands of the Newman Greenies. Michael Schmidt will be the quarterback now for Newman. Manning is finished for the evening. Schmidt, sophomore with good size himself, takes the snap, gives it running off right tackle. That's Will Bishop, the sophomore. Bishop picks up about three yards. Bishop's had some key time this year. He's had touchdowns against Episcopal earlier this year and against Country Day, among others. And Will Bishop knocks off about three at second and seven. Schmidt over toward the sideline to get the play. Clock continues to tick toward two minutes. Now Schmidt has to hustle back to the huddle to get this play in the game on time. He trots back out there along with 47, Wade Tornios, a junior running back. Schmidt barking signals. Here comes the blitz. He is hit. He is dropped in the backfield before he can make the handoff. And the blitz by Beckwith results in the sack. So Desmond Beckwith from his inside backer spot timed his blitz perfectly and gets to Schmidt. Goes to show that uh, Beckwith is not satisfied with the outcome here. And I tell you what, there's no quit in that horse, boy. I tell you what, he's going to go with everything he has. And it speaks very highly of the Episcopal players trailing 41 to 14 with just a little over a minute to go. Peyton Manning, 21, 25 attempts, 21 completions, over 200 yards, 217 and one touchdown. He also rambled for a couple of more. Done a great job tonight. Yeah, he's my choice for Triple A Trophies player of the game. And with a very good honorable mention to Cameron Johnson. Here's the pitch to Mooney running left. Look at Mooney evade tacklers, break tackles. He's inside the 15 and down on the 14. Heck of a run by Chris Mooney. He has a Newman first down, 19 yards on the carry. Yeah, Mooney is known for his inside running ability, but he shows he's got the speed to dance outside and scoot up the sideline, break a couple of tackles. And the junior wants to show the coaches why he why he doesn't get more chance to carry the ball. Great running and running behind Will Bishop. Good seal block right here. Uh, and Mooney cuts up the field, squares his shoulders, and boy, I tell you what, he's a tackle away from going into the end zone for another touchdown for the Greenies. First and 10 at the 14, 30 seconds left in the ball game and counting. Schmidt under center. This could be the last play of the game, and Newman's going to kneel on it. In sportsmanlike fashion here, they're in that formation. Schmidt takes the snap, takes two steps back, kneels on the ground. That will kill the clock. Newman's going to advance to the second round of the state playoffs as they improve to a perfect 11-0. They match their win total from a year ago, and the clock winding down, and Newman is going to win the football game. The Greenies winning this game over Episcopal. Our final score, 41 to 14, and the teams head out on the field to shake hands. A very sportsmanlike contest between two fine institutions here this evening, and Newman advances via the victory. Episcopal season is over, and Episcopal finishes four and seven. They had a fine season, and. They played tough for a while, but Newman just wore them down. Newman had the whole package tonight. They ran and threw the ball extremely well. Lance has an interview with Archie Manning. Let's head down field level now. Lance Jacob has a special guest. Lance? Thank you, Kenny. This uh, young man uh, needs no introduction, but for our radio audience, we're visiting with Archie Manning. Uh, Archie, your son played extremely well, and uh, he has all the tools to be a good one. Well, thank you. He's, um, he's been very fortunate and he's kept his health this year. And as you see, he's got some people who really caught the ball really well for him and um, and they, a lot of different people Cameron Johnson's giving them some good balance in their running game the offensive line it was, it was a good team effort tonight and it'll get tougher from here on out 
Peyton and his wide receivers seem so in sync. So many timing patterns are right there for him. Yeah, they've worked real hard. They spent a lot of time together in the summer. And uh, Nate Stibbs and Chip Abbott, his first year out for football, and it's really amazing what Chip's accomplished and Robert Brundage and even throwing to Cameron Johnson. And they really, you know, I don't think you can really go out and start in August and, and get that kind of time. And they've worked on it, you know, almost for a couple of years. And But they've had a lot of fun doing it, too. So much mention is made about his arm strength, but he's really a good athlete. I guess he gets that from his mother's side? I think he definitely gets that from his mother. He, Peyton's proud of his that he's improved his agility and his speed a little bit because he, he really didn't run very fast the last couple of years. And he, he, I'll say this for him, he worked real hard on that, and uh, he, he's proud of it, and, and, he, and he should be. But, you know, the main thing, I mean, high school football is just a, it, it's just a great institution and for these kids and the Episcopal kids, these kids, just to be able to play it and no serious injuries it looks like and the fans, it's just a, a great opportunity for them. And, it's, and the main thing, looks like they had a lot of fun. Archie, thank you for visiting okay, with us. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Kenny, back upstairs. Uh, that's the word from a proud papa. Back up to you. Should be. He's had a chance to watch his son play now here at Newman for the better part of four years, and he's watched him play in great fashion and representing not only his school but his family in terrific fashion indeed. 41-14, to 14, Newman has won it here this evening over Episcopal. Ken Trey, Hannah Lowen, Renee Nato, and Lance Jacobs will take a time out here. We have our... Triple-A Trophies player of the game coming up in just a moment. And we're back with more in just a moment from Lupin Field. This is the WSMB 1350 AM Cox Cable Prep Football Game of the Week. Newman has advanced to the second round of the state playoffs in Class 2A with a 41-14 victory over Episcopal here tonight at Lupin Field. Ken Trahan along with Renee Nato. And, Renee, the outcome never really in doubt this evening, was it? Well, maybe after the first few minutes when Episcopal scored, but Newman came roaring back. And really, after halftime, the game was over, Kenny. Cameron Johnson, a large reason as to why this game was never in doubt. He had three touchdowns in the ball game, rushed for 121 yards, caught three passes for 33 yards also. The other primary reason that the game was not in doubt is our AAA Trophies player of the game who's down on the field with his victorious head coach and our own Lance Jacob. Lance? Thank you, gentlemen. Field level now of Peyton Manning and head coach Tony Reginelli. Peyton, first you. Uh, great performance tonight, over 200 yards passing, one touchdown and two touchdowns running. Tell me about the performance. Well, thank you. It was a fun one. Um, just going into the playoffs, you talk to the team all week, you tell them every game is your last game, and you got to pick it up a notch in the playoffs. And uh, New Episcopal was a good team coming in, and they'd be coming after us since we beat them earlier in the season. So uh, the team responded real well. We had, we had a real good game tonight, and it was fun. I was talking to your father a little earlier. You seem so in sync with your wide receivers. A lot of work goes into the timing of that. Yes, sir, absolutely. And the, uh, the past couple of games, the linemen's uh, had some, tri some troubles, and we've been having to scramble a little bit. Our timing's been off, so we worked on it all week, getting the timing back, the linemen you know, creating some pockets, and uh, it really worked out well tonight. Heading into this game, you had to have a confidence factor. You beat this team pretty handily earlier, yes. but you don't want to be overconfident. Exactly, exactly. We knew Episcopal, uh, they're in a tough district, so their record wasn't real good, but we knew they'd be coming after us, and they'd, it's, they'd seen tape on us because we, we played them early in the season. We played them the past three years. So um, we really started a lot of film this week, and uh, we came to play. Did you have to make any adjustments during the game? Uh, you scrambled a little bit, yes. and of course you hit some big passes. Yes, sir. Uh, they, were, they were taking away our receivers, uh, Nate Stibbs and Chip out playing a little double zone. Uh, so when they do that, that your halfback's always open. It's Cameron Johnson did a great job, plus the running game. He didn't play the week, uh, played them in the second game of the season, so they were really worried about Cameron, and he ran the ball hard tonight. Peyton, congratulations, and best of luck to you in the future. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll have it. to work on getting your autograph and your dad's autograph a little later. All right. Okay. <laughs> Head coach now, Tony Reginelli. Uh, coach, this was a big factor for your kids not to be overconfident, and they were focused tonight. I think they were. All week, you know, we were, like Peyton said, we worked hard and uh, trying to get our timing down. And uh, Cameron uh, is a big asset to the offense. It opened things up for us. And we have some excellent skilled receivers. And uh, Chip Abbott and uh, uh, Nate Stibb does a tremendous job. And uh, Brundage really came on strong, made some, some key catches for us. Your wide receivers sometimes go overlooked, but they don't drop the ball that often. No, I tell you what, their hands, I, I don't know what they have in their gloves, but they, <laughs> the ball sticks in there. Cameron Johnson went out of the game late with a uh, little bruise on his right hamstring, or his right thigh, actually. He's going to be okay? Uh, it's, it's contusion. We, we didn't want to play him anymore. We felt that, you know, we, the young kids have to get in there, and uh, this is a good time to give them some experience. Coach, was it hard to get this team focused for tonight's game? No, I tell you what, we, we told them all week, we 0-0, and, 0, and uh, they're, they're starting out with a clean slate, and... Uh, you know, you have to take every game, like Peyton said. you got to take it like it's your last game. Well, Coach, congratulations. The player of the game for the AAA trophy is Peyton Manning. Thank and you. we'll make sure our trophy gets to the school at the end of the year. Thank you very much. We Thank you, Coach. That's it from field level, Kenny. It's been a great night here for Peyton Manning. Archie Manning stepped by to take a visit with us. How nice of him. And Tony Reginelli is now 11-0 in 1993-94. Back up to you. All right, thanks very much, Lance. 
41-14, Newman wins it. Chip Abbott had a fine game. Seven catches, 73 yards. A lot of contributors, Renee. They were very balanced offensively, played well enough defensively, and they're going to have to step it up next week and throughout the rest of the playoffs to be successful. And, of course, uh, Newman, Sorry. as a result, has advanced at 11-0 now on the season and into the second round of the playoffs with their victory here this evening. Great night for Peyton Manning. Great night for the Greenies. Final comments? Well, it, it tells you surprisingly, Peyton Manning is the main guy here, but it was not the Peyton Manning show. You had so many contributors to the Newman win, and this is definitely a team effort, Kenny. So Newman does move on, Episcopal through for the year. We're not through. We'll be back with another state playoff game for you next week. Can't tell you which one at this point, but we'll know for you. Check your listings for next week's game here on Cox Cable. Metro Channel 10 in Orleans, Jefferson, and St. Charles Parishes. In addition, you can hear the games live on WSMB Radio. Our final once again this evening was Newman 41 and Episcopal 14. For Renee Nato, for Lance Jacob, Walter Volpatti, our entire Cox Cable crew, this is Ken Trahan saying thanks for joining us. Be a good sport, and until next week, so long for just a while.